It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots back for another quarantine goddamn week of uh this motherfucking podcast. What's happening, Andrew? I'm chilling, man. How are, how are you, bro? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Yeah. Um beards coming in. Beards coming in. I think I'm gonna keep it, bro. You think you're gonna keep it? I like I it. I'm gonna keep it. Dude it looks called good. Me. A dude called from London this morning on the Breakfast Club. Said he'd been checking me out on my IG. Told me I'm looking handsome. Gay or straight? He was gay. So you know, it only matters. matters if they're gay. O- only matters when they're gay. That's All it. Right? Bro. I don't give a fuck if a straight man called me handsome. Because guess what? If a straight man calls me handsome, you're really gay. I don't you got think? time for scare. I don't got time for scare. Exactly. You think if, if you- a guy calls another guy handsome, that 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 means they're gay? I think they're gay. They just uh, don't know it yet. But it's only a I matter could, of time. I could see guys and see them as handsome, right? Like I could. There's certain guys that are handsome in conversation, right? Like if you're talking, right, and you know, yeah. you're like, "Oh, that's a good looking guy." But if you just are just randomly sipping your latte on the corner and you see a dude and you're like, "Wow, he's handsome." Eh. Eh. Yeah, I mean, I eh. think you, yeah, you had it's, me. At, you had me at latte, bro. It's something there. I'm just mm-hmm. saying, it's something there. Like for you just to be ran, because that's like you're attracted to him. That's can you admit that's kind of an attraction? Uh, I would say there's a difference between handsome and attraction. Talk to me. Because if you I, I find people good looking, like I can say, oh, that person is good looking, right? Yeah. But you're not attracted to them. Like certain women are attractive, but I'm not attracted to them. Like here's a perfect example: Jessica Chastain. Do you know who she is? Never heard of her, but she's, God damn it, she's I'm like Googling. the she plays like the save the day woman in every movie. Like she was in the movie where they got Bin Laden. She was a redhead. She's in would, Interstellar. She's the redhead. She's uh, in Molly's Game. She's the redhead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson. No, but sure. Okay. So she is beautiful. Like, she's just so beautiful, but her personality to me, I, in movies at least, I'm not, like, attracted to it. I'm, Jessica I, Chastain. It, Jessica Chastain. I'm just personally not attracted to it. Um, so I think the same can be true with guys. You could look at a guy and be like, wow, that guy's really handsome, but... I'm not attracted to his I'm personality. I'm not attracted to him. Gay! Son, <laughs> Gay! Saying, you never found a dude. You never found a dude to be attractive. No. I can Never give a, I, I can I can give it up and say a guy's good looking. You know what I mean? That's but, the same but, thing. What's no, 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 the no, no, difference? No. But when I say things like that, Let I don't mean it in like masculinity. Go. When I, I've said this conversation when I'm talking to talking about guys, but I say good looking, but not in the sense of like I think he's attractive. Like say if I'm talking about TV, right? And I'm yeah. talking about a show that I might be executive producing. I'm like, yo, that dude right there. You know, you know, he's smart. Like everything is the talent first, right? He's smart. He's funny. Yada yada yeah. yada. This and that. And he's and he's good looking. Cause that does matter, right? But it's not like yeah. he's good. He's not like he's good looking. Like, oh shit, I think that motherfucker fine. Like, you know what I'm saying? I know what I'm saying. I don't know if you know what you're saying. If how can someone be good looking and not fine? You want a guy that's fine for the show that you're executive producing. When you're, like, when yeah, you're but when casting you, one of your shows, yeah, right? Yeah. And you want a lead male that yeah. gets all the girls. Yes. You want a guy. That you're attracted to, that you but would you, like to suck his dick. But you as a man can't say that. You can't say he's fine. You can't say you, you have, want to suck his dick. I definitely can't say that. You can't you say can't, that, but you you got to be like someone who gets their dick sucked. No, I say he's good looking. And, and you saying that he's good looking has to be based off the fact that you vetted it through all the women that work on the show. Why do you women, need them to vet it? Why can't you just trust your gut, right? That's gay. That, if I, if I, if I, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. That is absolutely gay. If you have Trusting a feeling in your, your gut, oh, if you have a feeling in your stomach about a nigga, all right, another man. <laughs> if you have a oh, if you have a feeling in your stomach about another man, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. bro yeah, that's yeah. you think that's gay? Gay. <laughs> gay. Okay. Now, perfectly what if, fine. Perfectly fine to be gay. By the okay, way. Okay. What is what is a guy that you think is attractive? That I think is attractive. I don't think any guy is attractive. Okay. What is whatever word synonym you want to use for attractive? What is if a guy had, that? What do you what mean? What is the Depen- guy you think is good looking? Good looking? Depends. Yeah. Why am good I calling man. him good looking? Name a good looking man. Why am I calling him good looking? Trey Songs. Is Trey Songs good hey. looking? Um, depends for what role. No, no. Seriously, the dep- role of role of man in life. Is Trey Songs good looking? Taylor, is, is Trey Songs no, good no, looking? No, 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 no. Don't ask Taylor. Just you. If you had to define him as good looking or not. 
I have no idea. I'm totally neutral Yo, on the situation. So stupid. I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I'm so totally, scared. I'm Why totally you scared, bro. I'm not scared. I'm just totally Boring, neutral on the situation. Just say that. Morris Chestnut. Morris Chestnut is a good looking guy because he looks you, like me. Exactly. So you just compliment yourself and he does and? not look like you. Oh, well, we look like each other. Nah. Listen, let, let the record show Morris Chestnut. Like the chestnut Morris, that's been roasting on the open fire. Hey, some people like their chestnuts well done. Morris says. <laughs> Easy who? Jeezy. Me and Jeezy, uh, me and Jeezy have been uh, com- confused for each other. <laughs> yeah. Now, the true story. True story. Ayan Levanzant at Tyler Perry's um at, at Tyler Perry Studio Grand Opening. Yeah. Ayan Levanzant ran up on Jeezy and um said something to Jeezy. And then ran up on me later and said, I thought you was that other guy. I thought you was that other boy. And who's Ayan Levonson? Who's that? Ayan Le is uh, Fix My Life. Ayan Levonson, Fix My Life. I don't know who that is. Well, she's richer than both of us. Mm. That's, what, that's, that's, that's always important. Let's listen. Let's get into some positively brilliant and let's get into some what a fucking idiot, man. What okay. did you see this week that was positively brilliant? Um... Man, I, I saw a few. Th- I think uh, Kim Jong Un faking his death to find out who the traitors were in his circle was positively brilliant. This guy <laughs> Man, is. Come on, give me this hot take. No, nah, he faked <laughs> give me his this death. One. He faked his death to find out who the traitors were in his circle. The motherfucker was out there celebrating when he died. Right? He was like, "Ooh, you were celebrating? All right, adios." Okay. But they never. They never quite announced he died, though. Exactly. But the people who thought that he was dead. And then he found out exactly who they were, who was celebrating his demise. He gets them the fuck out of here. The only That's person that nice, looked happy, bro. Only, only person that looked happy when he died was his sister. So he might have to get his sister out of here, bro. Real Thanks talk. So. Anyway, I thought that was positively brilliant. Absolutely genius. You know, you get to find out how people really feel about you when they think you're dead. Fake that death, man. I think we need to fake more deaths. Explain I think it's a great idea. Why... Why was Kim Jong on on his Tupac Elvis Presley shit? Like, why would people even think that he would fake his death. Like our, our no, a better question. Nobody why when people it. why when people thought he was dead when he put out the picture of him cutting the ribbon at whatever he was at, people was trying to figure out if it was doctored. Like CNN did a whole segment on this. Like why? What is because this? he got the world shook, bro. Kim Jong Un is the goat. He got the world shook. Really? He got the world on a string. He's playing fucking yo yo with the world. Whatever he does, everybody's why, there for it because the guy's unchained, man. That's fucking. Yeah, dude, it's Asian Django. This yeah, guy does can't. not play around. Dude. He does whatever he wants to do. But he can't. He's not a threat to any. He's not a threat to America, at least. You think? Who knows? Now, I don't know. A few years on this podcast, you, you matter of fact, you had me dressed up in a soldier outfit one time doing a sketch about Kim Jong-un because you said his fucking missiles couldn't go anywhere. You was like, Yo. he's no threat to America. I don't think he's a threat to America. You, but actually, they- called him, you actually called him pussy. Uh, I would never use those words for the great Kim Jong Un. That's bro. a lie. That's a I'd goddamn lie. Those... Hey, that's you know a what? Lie. You know what? Maybe I got a call from the supreme leader, and he told me not to put that sketch out. Maybe that's what happened. Why though? Tell me what's what's up with Kim Jong Un. Why is he why is he such a threat? Son, what this guy? I don't know if he's a threat. I'll be honest. I I do not know if he's a threat. I have absolutely no clue. That being said, you got to put a little respect on his name, bro. What does he do that's bad? What does he do that's bad? Chris. Chris don't know. Chris glasses are fogging up right now. What? <laughs> Chris, <laughs> Chris, answer the question, Chris. What is Kim Jong Un doing? He that has bad? an entire he has an entire country oppressed in in various stages of starvation over the last ten years. For starters, I mean, mad countries starve. Chris, come on, yo. America about to be one of them. That's what I'm saying. You can't get fucking a beef patty at Wendy's. This shit about to be bad. Exactly. By the way, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson been talking about food shortages for years. This is Ooh. another reason, Dr. Claude Anderson, genius. How many uh, French people do you know, man? Oh no, Claude Levac, Dr. Claude, is, Claude Anderson, dude, come Claude, hang out with the regular folks again. Claude, Claude is an OG. He's eighty five years old. But um, yeah, it's gonna be bad, bro. That's why I've been telling everybody: li- learn to live off the fucking land, man. And, and 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 wouldn't it be something if like the the universe is really correcting itself, right? Like the Earth is correcting itself; it's healing mm-hmm. itself. Wouldn't it be something if all the vegetarians were right. <laughs> and, Why? And there, <laughs> and there ended up being a meat shortage and we all had to eat vegetables and then all of us end up liking it and never go back to meat ever again. 
Yo, Wouldn't that someone, be something? But can you explain to me why there's a meat shortage? Like, what do cow, cows don't die from coronavirus? What, what, what's the issue here? What's going on? I think it was something about, uh, and I correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who knows, but from what I was hearing, mm -hmm. there was a coronavirus outbreak in a factory and the coronavirus workers, I mean, not the coronavirus workers, the meat factory workers wanted to stop working. Right. But Trump signed some executive order to keep them all working, even though they all feel like they shouldn't be working. Let's go. You know? Let's and go. I guess... Uh, what they do is not like a job that anybody can do. Like it's not a job that you can just get rid of all the meat workers and then put some soldiers in there and they fucking, you know, whatever they do to the meat, I don't goddamn know. Right. You know? So that's what that's 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 what I've been told. Not so saying you're that's saying correct. This entire by, time, oh, oh, by the way, yeah. not saying that I'm correct, because I'm tired of y'all in our comments saying we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. This is the brilliant idiots, idiots podcast. We're not here to make sense. All right. Anyway, that was my positively brilliant. What about you? What do you got? Positively brilliant this week was for me was um Tory Lanez partnering with do? YouTube uh to help uh artists monetize their shows from home. Okay. Um Erica Badu also, even though she she started this a few weeks ago, she she launched her own live stream platform and she charges viewers between a dollar and three dollars rather than using IG Live or YouTube or other you know, traditional avenues that everybody is using. And it's so weird to me how we have such a double standard based on what social media tells us, what, based on what social media tells us, right? And this is what I mean by that. Erica Badu started that a few weeks ago, charging a dollar, three dollars. People go watch her, yada, yada, yada. It's People say it's brilliant. Tory Lanez, even though he partnered with YouTube, you know, um, you know, he's charging. People say he's brilliant. Teddy Riley, a couple of weeks ago, tried to tell people like, look, we can do it on Instagram Live, but let me run it on my own website as well. Why can't we have our own platform? And because people were saying, nah, Teddy fucking up the fun, or nah, you know, Teddy fucking up the verses, nah, Teddy shouldn't be charging, this and that, which he never said he was going to charge. He just said, yo, let's get it, bring it to my platform. People were killing him for it. Mm -hmm. But when, when, when it's presented a different way, and the way Tori and Eric are doing it, people are like, yo, well, that's, that's the way for artists to make money while they're stuck in quarantine. You know, artists don't know when they're going to be able to get back on the road and do shows. So that's a way for them to, you know, monetize their shows from home. I think it's brilliant. You know, um, I don't know if I would necessarily pay to see somebody perform, but I do know if it was like, I would have definitely paid for some of the verses. I would have definitely paid for some of those. I would definitely pay for Jill Scott and Erica Badu this weekend. I would definitely have paid for Teddy Riley and Babyface. What was, what was Tori doing on YouTube? Performing. So he was doing a live show? Doing a live show on stage. To nobody? Performing. No crowd. No crowd. How was it? I'm curious. I mean, it looked okay. But listen, you got to think, right? We're the audience. We're just not there in the venue. Right, but so there, is, there is value to that audience interaction. Maybe less so in music, but you need it with stand-up. Um, like, if, if I was a stand-up comedian and I was doing that, I would do what Bishop T.D. Jakes is doing right now. Which is? Bishop T.D. Jakes preaches to an empty church, but it's literally like maybe three people. Like I watch, you know, I watch him every Sunday, but this Sunday, just since it's top of the mind, um, I saw his wife was there and there was like one other person there. All you really need is two people. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, what Bishop T.D. Jakes said is cool. Bishop T.D. Jakes said, I never needed a crowd to, to get, to work myself up. Right. Because there's no uh, reaction that is necessary to what he's saying. Shit. Better come with me to a black church. Are you crazy? Right, but you don't need go go on, yeah. child. Yes, you do, man, child. Yes, you do. You need <laughs> people, you need you Tabernacle. need people. That, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, but you, you don't need, need yes. that. You don't yeah, you need do. that. You need well, it. Well, TD Jakes just proved you don't. Right? It's not like he's got well, well he got a few working people. a buzzer that they press a button and you hear some old lady go, "Come on, child." Well, he got a few people there. It's just like you, right? You're a comedian. All you need is one person to laugh. Well, and you and you off to the races. We've been <laughs> like, doing. We've been doing the like the weekly uh, thing. I don't even have a name for it right now. I need to get a name for it. But um, the thing basically you reposted, we've been doing every single week where we basically oh, shit. take a topic. You Positively got some smoke brilliant. for that, bro. I admire I you, bro. Up. I think you I give sat a fuck. in the fire, man. I admire you, bro. Listen, I love that. You I sat give, in the I've, fire for that one. I've, I've taken heat for worse. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you think I give a fuck about that shit? Like, motherfuckers really mad at me for how I feel about a presidential candidate? Mm. God damn. I ain't I, am I not an American? Yeah. 
Do I not have the right to vote for who I want to vote for and decide who I want to vote for based yeah. off what interests they are presenting? Yeah. And you mad at me because Andrew gave an endorsement of the motherfucker? Mm -hmm. Just because the endorsement didn't come in the way that you wanted to hear. Mm. Right? Yeah. You, start, you started it off by saying he'd be the great, a great president and you listed your reasons why. Mm -hmm. I, thought it was, I thought it was hilarious. Thank what you, man. What the fuck? What the fuck? I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was fucking smart. How you mad at me because I posted some shit that my guy who's a comedian created, and it was good. Thank what you. the fuck? Take that shit to Joe Rogan's page. Joe posted it. Yeah, they were loving it over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Two different worlds, right? Motherfuckers is like, oh, my, one motherfucker told me, see, shit like this is going to help Donald Trump get reelected. I gave Donald Trump donkey of the day today. Donald Trump has his own donkey of the day intro. I post all kind of wild ass Donald Trump memes and shit making jokes about Donald Trump. Yeah. So the one time... The, the Democratic candidate gets some smoke, and which wasn't the first time. I've posted shit about Joe Biden before. The For one sure. time he gets some smoke, y'all motherfuckers mad at me, and now uh, I'm the one that's going to help get Donald Trump reelected. Well, how about this? Since I've given Donald Trump donkey today so much and spoken out against him, if Joe Biden gets elected in November, do I get credit for Joe Biden getting elected? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? And I'll be honest, we flamed Trump in that thing too, but nobody paid attention I, I thought to so. It. We flame Trump. You were comparing the two. You were showing why they're so much alike. But actually, Joe Biden just does what Trump does better. Exactly. But it's the same shit. Like, Stupid. I know. But the thing is, they just, at least the way that we've been thinking about things is like, the way I go into any joke, right, is I, I don't think any joke should have a political party attached to it. I think you just do the joke based on what your gut tells you. And sometimes your gut tells you it's liberal. Sometimes it says it's conservative. Sometimes it says reasonable right in the middle. But I never decide the political party of a joke before I go about it because I don't think you get that real thing that people connect to. And the cool thing about the piece was that it connected to people on all sides of the political spectrum because it connects to who you are as a person, not this political idea of who you are. Man, you know? it's... it's I, I totally understand. It's like even like I, I'll put this under positively brilliant. Don Lemon, not not his comments per se, but somebody took his comments I, about it, Donald the Trump shit? and put him under ether with the mm -hmm. pigeon from the fucking Stillmatic album yep. and the hat cocked to the side from the Stillmatic album. And so I put in the caption, the Don. Why? Because Nas always calls himself the Don. Yeah. Nas has a song called the Don. To me, I like smart shit that connects so many different dots. Yeah. That's it. It was well done. It, it was, was good. I, I don't give a fuck what really Don Lemon was saying. Yeah. Because if I did, I would have posted that before they had to eat the shit to it. Also, <laughs> he know? didn't say anything. Nah, it was common sense. It was stating the obvious. I didn't get, I didn't, I, didn't, I honestly didn't understand what the hype was about it. You know what I'm saying? I really didn't. Like everybody but it was, was a like, fun piece. It was like a, it was like a cool meme, a funny meme. A meme can be funny regardless of political affiliation or having no political affiliation at all. And I know it. as we approach the election, people get riled up and they get so caught up in the emotions of these things. But if you are creating comedy content, you cannot be saddled to one side because then you give away the most valuable asset you have as a comedian, which is the element of surprise, right? Ooh. If I know how you're going to go with every single piece of content you put out there, yeah, there's yeah, no surprise. Yeah, yeah. You cannot be funny anymore. The That's biggest why, knock um, on SNL is we know where you're going to go with every single take. And the times yeah. that they catch us off guard, we're like, yo, that shit was fire. We didn't see yeah. that coming. That's why we get, you know, that's why so many of these talk show hosts nowadays, it's like, eh, I know what your angle gonna be. Every you know time, bro. Every, like, I, I like, I need, we know, we know people on Fox gonna go all the way to the right. We know people on MSNBC, CNN, or, mm -hmm. you know, these late shows, they gonna go to the left. Who the fuck is in the gray area? Yo, you know the crazy thing, bro? Most people are in the gray area. Most people in the gray area. If you're being objective. No, no. It, I don't know, Schultz. I don't think people... I, I think it's hard for people to be objective, Oh, bro. oh okay. Let me, let me back that statement up. I think most people, their internal monologue, who they are when they're by themselves is... I hate the word moderate because I don't feel like I'm moderate. I don't think you're moderate. I think we're reasonable. The word moderate sucks. But like, mm, I think most I like people that. are in that gray area, right? They're in the middle, right? And then one or two issues pulls them to one side. But most people are operating right here. Some people yeah. go, you know what? I really care about uh, uh, the black uh, experience here in America. And I'm going to vote for the person that is offering the best possible solution to all the black problems that exist right now. If that's on the right, if that's on the left, boom, I'm voting for that person. Right? Yeah. Jewish people might do the exact same thing. 
Uh, some person might really feel strongly about abortion and they go, you know what? I don't believe in abortion and I'm going to vote Republican because they tend to not believe in uh, having abortion be, being legal. And but realistically, all my other shit is kind of liberal. But it's a single yeah, issue yeah, yeah, that pulls yeah. us aside. So the, when the rest of the time when we're just having conversations, it's mostly gray. Most people are in the gray. I like I like the word reasonable over moderate. Yeah, um, I, like, I, lo I love I love the fact that to be reasonable is in the gray area. I love the fact that you know um, I like I like to have I like to leave reasonable doubt for things. You know what I'm saying? And you know what else was bl black and white? Or was actually gray? The Reasonable Doubt album cover by Jay-Z. Oh, so, I see what you did there, bro. So to, me, to me, it all makes perfect sense. You know what I mean? See I see that. I, I want to say, you know who else I think is positively brilliant? Um, Go. I think I think what Diddy did last week is positively brilliant. I think him um saying that the black vote ain't free. And you know, him saying that, you know, uh somebody has to come with a real black agenda. And him saying that he's gonna hold the vote hostage. Uh I think we talked about this last yeah, week. Yeah, you said that right? last week, I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, the reason I'm saying I'm giving them positively brilliant now is because on Monday, Joe Biden released a black agenda called the Lift Every Voice <laughs> Black Agenda, which is named after the Black Negro spiritual <laughs> anthem. Lift right? Every Voice. You know, a Lift lot of white people are like, aren't they loud enough? <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, good. Being loud <laughs> is what is what caused Joe Biden to put that motherfucking agenda out there. 100%. You know what I mean? And I like I like the fact that Simone Sanders said, um, you know, this uh this agenda is, is I think I don't know if she said it or Biden said it, but they said that it's a, a living agenda, meaning that, you know, it, you, it can it's still room for negotiation. Like it's still things to be added to it. You know what I mean? And I listen, as I told y'all, there is nothing irresponsible about demanding something for your vote. And now Joe Biden put something on the table and, you know, it's up for review. You know, it's, it's I, I have thoughts on it. You know, it's things that I like in it. It's things that I don't like in it. You know, my initial thoughts are it's more the same old, same old, you know, especially the same old, same old we hear from established Democrats, establishment Democrats. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, like, like they write these proposals and they identify the problem using the word African-American or right. black. And then they start talking these arising tide, lift all boats, policies. You know what I mean? That's what they should have called it. They, should, they actually should have called the policy uh, lift every boat. Oh, lift every slave ship. Lift every slave ship would have been good. Lift every slave ship. Lift every slave ship would have been good. A rising just, tide lifts all boats. Yeah, I mean, that's when they hit you, which, which, Joe, which was always Joe Biden's thing. Joe Biden used to always say that, you know. Yo, you uh, know black, what y'all uh, got to do? Next time somebody, next time one of these white politicians goes, listen, we have to rise the tide. You got to be like, listen, we're not that good at swimming. Okay, well, can no, we keep they, the tide low? They don't say it like that. What they say is, they, they'll say things like an American agenda is a black agenda which we know just isn't the case. That's not reality. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like the trickle down economics thing. That shit is not coming to the hood. Never has, never will. It. I understand what you're saying. There are other people that are going to get it first. Obviously, Absolutely. there there is a trickle down effect by being in America. Like, being black in America is better than being um, fucking, I don't know, black in war-torn Congo, right? So there is a trickle down effect to being in America. The problem is, is that historically black people have been on the bottom of that trickle. So there's all these other groups Absolutely. that are getting that way yeah. before. So it's like, how do you, how do you redistribute the trickle? If, if you have created, let, let's not act like what happened to black people in America wasn't intentional. Let's not act like right. it wasn't by design. So if right. you had, if you had systemic things that were done intentionally to, to put people in those conditions, you got to do systemic things to get them out. It's really just that simple. That's why even with like Joe Biden's, uh, Black agenda, like the criminal justice reform is weak, especially for somebody who wrote the 94 crime bill. Like you, you got to atone for that 94 crime bill by coming with a better, you know, criminal justice agenda. And the economic, the economic plan is cool, but it's cool for black people who already got a little money. You know what I'm saying? Like, like if you say you want to advance the economic mobility of black people and close the racial, you know, wealth and income gap by investing in black workers, businesses, and communities, that's great. Like you say, you want to expand black home ownership and wealth building, great. But we also have to remember, you can't small business home ownership your way out of poverty because most people don't have the capital to get started. Right. You understand what I'm saying? So like those, that shit works for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I can take advantage of that shit, but the everyday person working in the hood, they can't. You know, it's now, just like- of your staff, how many people are, are black? My staff? Yeah. Everybody except for two. 
So you it could depends argue, what you call what do you call staff? Like you could be my my personal employees. Yeah, or like just like my team. People who your team. I mean, from what I've seen, you have a lot of black people on your team. Yeah. Right. So maybe helping a guy like you actually does create a trickle down effect directly to your community. Nobody else is <laughs> siphoning off that trickle because it's like, okay, boom, I'm going to help this small business that Charlemagne's going to going to open and you know he's going to open it in Monk's Corner, South Carolina where he's actually going to end up employing 80% black people and then those black people now have jobs and they could potentially start their own businesses so maybe this this like maybe this infusion in capital in the business savvy people of a community is actually the best thing you could do to a community instead of just giving everybody in the community the stimulus check and they don't really know how to reinvest that in a way that's going to help them for future generations. Like what I would do now, is I would give money to the people that know what they're fucking doing. Um, I would do that. I think that's one way. I'm not mad at that. You know what I'm saying? I, I said, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Because you're living, a, you're living, you're living proof of the actions, right? It's like you, if, if the government basically said, yo, Charlamagne, you don't got to pay taxes this year, but you know what you got to do with that money is start another business. By osmosis, you're gonna hire black people because that's who's around you. Yeah, but you know, it, it still won't be enough, though. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, I would, I, it's a start, it's a push, it's right? A, but I mean, that's. But by the way, that's happening. If 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 guys like me do what they're supposed to do and take advantage of these, you know, small business initiatives and stuff like that, that's already happening. But right. I'm talking about those people on the ground, right? Like like Mayor Bloomberg had something in his Greenwood initiative where he wanted to put seventy billion dollars. And, and, and the most poor and disenfranchised hoods across America, like the top right. 10 most poor and disenfranchised hoods, right? Like, to me, I like stuff like that. I'm going to stop putting a dollar amount on those type of things only right. because I don't want to, you know, uh, un uh, undercut us. But yes, there should be billions of dollars invested in hoods all across America. Like, it should go to improving public schools. It should go to improving hospitals. It should go to uh, improving housing. Because we all know environment, you know, a, a good environment automatically improves a kid's mental and, and emotional health. Like it should go to, you know, good health care. You know what I'm saying? So it should me, go to uh, after school programs, like free trade school in the hood. You know what I mean? Let people learn how to do things with their hands. So now these kids, not only can they go make a living, they can rebuild their fucking neighborhoods because you got electricians over here and air conditions, air conditioned people over here and car carpenters over here. Like it's a lot right. of different ways. So let that me, we throw, can help something, our let me throw something by you, right? We've Talk heard of these programs that have been put in these poor communities and to hopefully uplift these poor communities. It's not the first time the money has been put into the hood, right? Um, yeah, it depends. I mean, we could look at Barack Obama had certain programs and like plenty of other presidents have had certain programs and mayors and governors have had programs to uplift poor communities, not just black communities, but just poor communities in general, mm -hmm. right? In black communities, and I'm sure it's the same as in Russian communities and other kind of a uh, new other other poor maybe communities where there's like new immigrants, et cetera. I'm sure there are people who are like leading industry within the poor community, right? And who are trying to rebuild that community. Like there's a guy in Houston. What's his Absolutely. name? Absolutely. Slim oh, Trey? Thug, is that it? I mean, it's a lot of them doing that in Houston. You got Slim Thug, you Trade got the Truth. Trade the Truth. You got guys like Jay Prince, like all those brothers in Houston so been like, reinvesting. And those are just the entertainers. I I'm I'm, I'm it's, no, no, I people get that yeah, that's so people I'm that just, do that work I'm, for a I'm living all the time. I'm just going off the entertainers because that's what I know, right? Yeah, yeah, So yeah. if I got money, I could give it to the government, right? Who's maybe, if I have government money, I could give it to government officials who are maybe not the most uh, efficient with their spending, right? Because oftentimes you don't have the best businessmen or most intelligent people in those government positions because you can't profit that much. Or I could go to someone who's already functioning super well within that community and already has a profitable business within that community. And I could give them an influx of cash and I could go, what, what would you do with this money? How can we support you? And you, Hey, use this money to actually have a profitable business that you're going to then hire people and you're going to help grow. Like to me, I'm going, what does Nipsey hustle doing in his community? All right, let's invest in Nipsey. Let's invest in the guys that are already in those communities who understand how those communities function. Not some white stiff, who's on fucking Capitol Hill and then is going to go to Compton and know exactly what Compton needs as far as a business? Nah, go to the community, ask them what they need, what's going to work, what's going to function. And I'm those not, businesses I'm, will be supported because the community I'm, already supports those people. I'm not mad at any of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's like a good example of that is in Joe Biden's Black Agenda, he has uh, this proposal for like a $900 million over eight-year grant program to fight gun violence, right? 
Okay. I don't even know what the fuck that means. All right. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, how does that reduce gun violence? I would rather figure out ways to directly put that money in the hands of the people, create opportunities for them. That's how you reduce gun violence. You reduce gun violence by reducing poverty fucking tea. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's how you reduce gun violence. So give these kids an opportunity to do something positive with themselves. Like that's why I said, invest the money in the schools, man. Invest the money into aftercare programs. Invest the money in the free trade school. Invest the money in just the environment, my fucking fix the fucking projects up. You know what I'm saying? Make these people's places that they live in look fucking decent. So their mind state starts to change. If you put a fucking human being in a shitty condition, his mind is going to be shitty. He's going to feel like a fucking animal or she's going to feel like a fucking animal or a savage. She's going to feel downtrodden. She's going to feel like fuck his shit. Uh, we just out here. You know what I mean? Like this is, we, we, it's garbage all around us. So shit, that's life. That's all they know. Like, no man, give people something to fucking inspire to bro. Like, I yeah, know, I like that, I, man. I like the idea of like, fixing the community, but I like the idea of hiring people within the community to fix the community. Right. It's I, like, I agree. With, I agree with that. The only problem I have with that, and it's not even a problem. I just think that like, like promising black folks that they will rise via black capitalism through small businesses, through education, through home ownership. That isn't everybody's reality. By the way, that's nobody's reality in America, black or white. Like the U.S. is not driven through small business economy. And we exaggerate the return on investment uh, when it comes to education. OK. And home I ownership is with you on that. I'll push back by on education? education. Yeah. I think is the fastest really? way. I think is the fastest way to um, is the fastest way for class mobility. Meaning, is the fastest way to go from let's say middle class to upper middle class or lower class to middle class. The fastest way that you could possibly do that, and you can do it within one generation, is by education. So you telling me that all of these kids that have degrees out here right now mm -hmm. that can't find a job. They have to continue their education. Don't get a degree. I think, I, 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 don't get I think a degree in poetry. Don't get a degree okay, in literature. Now get that, a degree in okay. engineering. You will have a job okay, and you will up right. your stats. That's the thing that people thought yes. is like, they think they just go to college and they study history and all of a sudden they're going to have a real job. And no bullshit. If you do study history, you could get a job teaching. You could get a real job. I don't know if yeah. it's going to uh, increase your, your class, but you can choose when you go get your education to study engineering and you will have a job when you come out of college without a doubt. I think that's what we have to start saying and, and when we talk about education. Speak on it. It's about it's about what you major in. Now, mind you, I didn't go to college and so don't listen to fucking me. This is pure brilliant idiot logic. You majored, I'm just saying like you majored in radio. And now what happened? I did. I did. You're right. But but like uh you're gonna be a doctor, you know, something in the medical field, you're gonna make some money, you're gonna get a job. All right, you do something in engineering, you're going to make some money, you're going to get a job. If you become an attorney, you're probably gonna make some money, you're gonna get a job. Like stuff like that. Bro, literally your counselor. Cause I know we live in like this individualistic society where we tell kids like do whatever makes you feel good. And I do believe that if you have the opportunity to do whatever makes you feel good, but mm -hmm. your college counselor should tell you, Hey, these are the jobs that America thinks they're going to need in four years. They're in these fields. And these are the schools that have yeah, openings yeah, in these yeah, fields that yeah. fit the grades that you yeah. have. Do you want yeah. a guaranteed job making 60 grand a year? The second you get out of college or 80 grand a year, whatever some engineers make. Do you want that? Yes, I'd like yeah. that. That's what you study. You're out of poverty. Because because right now you would you would be pushing kids toward the tech world, right? Like hundred percent. That's, that's what, what you, you did, Al. That's that's what Al did. What Al do? Al did every fucking job. He's like Forrest Gump, but he was a nurse. He did psych. Well, you did psychology, psychology, and then there was one other thing. Oh, he, he became a cop. He was a cop, Alex. Yeah, bro. Alex, we need you back on the police force, especially in New York City. You see how these fuck? Yeah, how you, you got fucking uh, Garcias beating the shit out of people. What is a Garcia? That Mexican, that Spanish, Puerto Rican? What so, the fuck is a Gar? What is Fernando? Fernando Garcia? What is that? That sounds Mexican. That shit That's could not, be Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't claim him, but nah, I, I get what you're saying. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want us to uh, even home ownership. Like that's not the only path to wealth either. You know what I'm saying? Totally like, true. That's not the only path to wealth. So it's solid for people who already have a little something, but you know what, think you know what home Biden, ownership is good for It's good for guys like me and you that, and don't let me speak on your behalf, but you and I, I assume don't really understand the financial markets, right? To the point where we're willing to dump hundreds of thousands of dollars in there. Right. No, that's why I got a financial guy. Now you have a financial guy, but like mm. a guy like me and you who understands our craft and has disposal income because of our craft, 
We also understand the concept of if I buy that home, it's going to probably increase in value over the next 10, 20 years. And I'm already paying rent anyway, so I might as well pay a mortgage. That's simple enough for us. Simple. Whether we're and, even, gonna, and even if it doesn't increase in value, I'm, I'm going to get my up. money back. Yeah, I'll get my money back or something. That's it. Yeah. It's, that's at least I got a house. That's it. I'm going to yeah. have to pay rent regardless. I might as well pay a mortgage and then I get to own it after. Boom, I'm good. It's that's the right. simplest form of investment. Yes. Now, if you, I honestly, I'm ignorant when it comes to uh, investing in the stock market. I don't know what a fucking Vanguard account is, a VTX this, a that, a Berkshire Hathaway. I don't really know that much. So if someone's telling me, hey, Schultz, give me $100,000 and I'll put it in the market, I'm skeptical of that. I'm like, what is that? What does that mean you're going to put it in the market? Yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. I did that uh, a few weeks ago um, and I, I check it every night. I don't know why. Because you're paranoid, B. You're like, yo, they running away with it? <laughs> well, I did, I, I, I did an S&P 500. So it's like a, a very diversified portfolio. So it's right. like investments in a lot of different things. But for me, it's like my guy told me to look at that and walk away, bro. Yep. That's, that's 15 years, 30 years down the line. Don't even worry about it. Son. Why the f why am I going on to look at it every night? I don't fuck it. Because you don't trust that shit, fam. It's like... <laughs> Look, hey, listen, give me your money and walk away. Isn't that every robbery? <laughs> That's literally the beginning and end of every robbery. Give me your money. Now walk away. Okay. You walk, walk away. Yeah. No, nah, you're right. You're absolutely right. But I will say, past couple of weeks, that shit went up. Right. I was like, oh, shit. You, you probably did the right thing. They, I, think they're, I think some people say that the most money is going to be made. The, mo the biggest transfer of wealth always happens during economic crisis. Everything and it's sad. That's that's fucked. But once again, that's fucked up. I sent Chris this article. I meant to send it to you too. It was this article about this woman. I forgot what she's from, but she has been been predicting shit like this for years. Like she yeah. predicted the and she's not like a psychic. She's something else. But she predicted like the coronavirus and this and that. Right. And she said what's gonna come next is one of the things is a lot of people who are already rich are gonna come out this come out of this situation even richer. Yes. Right. But that gap between the haves and the have nots is gonna be even wider. Yep. And even worse. Yep. And that's when the civil unrest is going to motherfucking start. Yep. That's just, I, I, I can see that coming a mile of fucking way. Like a lot of that shit is just like common sense, but you could just see it coming a mile away, man. I just, yep. listen, I, like I said, uh, Biden's economic plan isn't bad, but it's, 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 it's not for people who, who, who don't have. It's for people who have, you know, a little bit of something that can, afford to invest in those type of things. Cause like for me, like when it comes to like, even with home ownership, like, you know, I got to see, you know, um, you know, you got, you got to provide down payment assistance. Yep. You got to, you, you got to get capital, black folks. Bro. Yeah. You got to get black folks banked and recognized by credit scoring companies. You got to enforce fair lending laws. Like you got to reduce foreclosures and evictions for motherfuckers that's fucked up now. Like, and, yep. and you, you got to increase the supply of affordable housing. How about that? Like I love what Queen Latifah was doing in Newark. Queen Latifah was building like <clears throat> 14, affordable houses in Newark. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the type of shit you have to do if you really are trying to help, you know, people come up in the world. And I still, I believe in like a universal basic income, but I was talking to a, a brother who doesn't believe in universal basic income. And he had another, um, another way to get that kind of money to, to, to people, which I thought was smart. And I'm too dumb to repeat. You believe in universal basic it. income? I believe that if we can have, you know, $1.8 trillion stimulus packages or whatever the fuck it is. Right. Yes, I do believe that you can give people a little, little hands up. I definitely believe that. Well, that's different. So universal basic income is different than giving people a hand up. Universal basic income is like $1,000 every month for every American citizen. Right. So- you're not really giving people a hand up if everybody gets it because now everybody's hand is at the same height again. Well, as long as you, as long as there's no inflation. Well, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't change anything in the economy, like, like in the market, like right. if you don't change anything in the market and you keep everything the way that it is. Right. And you give everybody a thousand dollars. That's, that's going to get the economy. Boom. And if you get everybody a thousand dollars a month, disposable income. Yeah. But what usually will happen is, um, I guess the way economies work from what I've been reading about it is uh, inflation happens when there's too much money and not enough things to buy. And by increasing the amount of money without increasing the amount of things to buy, money could start to become less valuable, right? 
So like if you look at like the fall of empires, usually the fall of empires happens when one, they're in nonstop wars, which is kind of what we're going through. And two, when they start inflating their own money, just printing money to pay for those wars. So the universal basic income thing, it sounds good, but in reality, I don't think it works, man. I think you just, people end up being in the same place that they were. It's like, oh, now everybody has another thousand dollars. Okay. Well, rent ends up being a thousand dollars more. Now we're all back to even. I will say this though. This is America. In America, there will never, there's an endless supply of useless shit to buy, bro. Yeah. Fair like enough. Fucking, like, fair like, enough. Like this, is, this is the country that sold the Chia pet. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck? Why the yeah. fuck would we ever buy a goddamn Chia pet? This yeah. is the country that bought, remember them little sea monkeys you could buy and put in the water? Yeah. And they would tell like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. 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 Like, I, I don't know, man. Like, whatever. All, long story short, I give Diddy uh, props. Because Diddy, uh, Magno, he he put a microphone to a conversation that's been going on for the past year and some change. And look, man, if motherfuckers want to play ball, they got to play ball. Like, it's Yo, all about negotiating, baby. And you know what? Maybe it's important that like people connect those two things. Because I think it's too easy to go, ah, fuck Diddy for saying that, fuck him. And then a couple weeks later, you actually have a black agenda from Biden. Le and Less than a week. Yeah, a week later, you have a black Less gentleman from Biden. And then people might just forget that what Diddy said or what you were saying, what other people were saying inspired it. If you connect both of those things, then maybe people will start to speak out more because they're like, oh, shit, when I speak out, I'm heard. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Listen, man. Charlemagne to God. I want y'all to write this down. Yeah. Okay? You get what you demand. You encourage what you tolerate. Uh. Simple as that. You uh. get what you demand. You encourage what you tolerate. If you don't say shit, you're going to keep getting exactly what the fuck you've been getting all of these years, right. which is shit. Because clearly you're tolerating it. You know what I mean? When you right. tell a motherfucker to back up off you, or there might be some consequences and repercussions, then a motherfucker probably going to back up off you. Right. At, le at least enough to see if you really bought that shit you kicking. And then when he realized you ain't about that shit you kicking, he gonna hit you with that shit Mike Tyson was doing on, on goddamn Instagram Live <laughs> this fucking week, right? Mike said he want to come back, bro. I know. He's bored, huh? Man, Mike said he going Mike said he about to get in the ring and do three and four rounds uh for charity. I'm 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 here for that. Yeah, but who wants that smoke, bro? I'm not getting in the ring with that. Nah, I wouldn't fight Mike Tyson. Nah, 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 nah. He got that old man strength now, too. Oh. Mike Tyson will knock you the fuck out, man. You know what's so interesting? What's that? I um I was sitting back thinking about this, right? And I guess we can go into the the, the deep dive. Well, what about what a fucking idiot? Oh, what a fucking... Damn, we didn't do no... It had to be some stupid motherfuckers this week, right? Who was stupid this week? Yo, you know who's kind of stupid? Talk to me. Isaiah Thomas, bro. <laughs> Why is Zeke stupid? Because he just don't know that nobody likes him. I wouldn't be mad at that if I was... Like, yo, Zeke is an alpha male, bro. Hey, all respect to Zeke? Alpha male. I don't give a fuck how many times he kissed Magic Johnson in the mouth. Alpha fucking male, uh, You got to be an alpha male to go kiss a motherfucker with AIDS and be like, I ain't getting it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, whoa, bro. Whoa. That's an alpha move. Jesus Christ. That's an alpha God move. damn. That's not an alpha move. Yeah, it's like, a yo, nobody could beat me, not even AIDS. And then you go smooch all, a dude who got it. Isaiah was kissing Magic before Magic got diagnosed with AIDS. That's number one. Number two, clearly, Americans ain't scared of no goddamn viruses. All right, this country is reopening <laughs> at the height of a afraid. pandemic. You think Isaiah give a fuck? Please. No, nah, but why like, you think, it just why you think Magic out. Johnson been on CNN all week? Say again? <laughs> why you think Magic been on CNN for the past two weeks? He has? Magic be on everybody's show. And I'm just sitting there like, Magic is the symbol of why we ain't afraid of no goddamn viruses. <laughs> that's what Magic represents. Salute to Magic Johnson. Every that's time I right. see Magic on CNN, I beat my chest like, that's right, open up America, <laughs> goddammit. Let's go. Let's fucking go. All right? I'm out here being pussy. And Magic been living with this shit for 30 fucking years. Let's fucking go. <laughs> All right? He's on there with no fucking gloves, no uh, no mask. No nothing. gloves. No, no nothing. Still that, no that's, protection. That's still no protection. <laughs> still no protection. Magic the GOAT. <laughs> well, why you don't like Zeke? I didn't say I don't like him. I actually okay, okay. like people who irritate uh, others and aren't wildly liked by everybody. I relate Me to too. it. Me now, too. Me too. That's that's it's a problem I have. Now, that being said, he seems to be unaware of the fact uh, or unaware why he was left off that team. But from everybody else, it seems like 
he wasn't the only, uh, Jordan wasn't the only person that didn't like him. Jordan didn't yeah, like yeah. him. Pippen didn't yeah. like him. Right? Larry, uh, Larry, who, Larry Bird. Larry didn't Larry like Larry him. Larry Bird didn't like him. Um, they said Magic, but I don't. I don't know if I agree with that. I think him and Magic might have had some issues. So and they, you know, they had a, but they loved each other. I don't think they now, said Magic in the doc though. Now here's the thing that nobody talks talks about, but I think it's really interesting. Who coached that team? Chuck Daly. Who? No, no, no. Yup, you right. Chuck Daly. No, 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 no. Yep. Mike Mike Krzyzewski, Mike Krzyzewski was the original dream team. Chuck Daly was. I don't know. Nah. No, really? it was it was Chuck Daly who coached that team. So Chuck Daly and Chris, you can speak up if I'm wrong, but Chuck Daly coached that team, right? I Chris? think he, I know. He, I think he was either dream correct, team one, correct. or dream team. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah so yeah. Chuck Daly coached that team. Chuck Daly was it's coach. If if he was really truly wanted on that team, his coach that led him to two championships would have fought for him, and he did not. I don't yeah, even Chuck, know if Chuck yeah. Daly liked that team. Yeah, but Chuck Daly didn't have no power over Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, of Larry course, Bird. Of course, but he could Pippen. offer. He could offer. Not and it really. seemed like that wasn't even made. Like Rod Thorne, I think it's Rod Thorne who's getting interviewed the whole time, never said, yo, Chuck Daly came to me and he fought for IT, but I had to say no. Right? Like, yeah. it seemed like it was known that Isaiah was on the team because Isaiah wasn't liked and Isaiah was going to fuck up the vibe. Just don't be, listen, I, I agree with you, you know, but I, I tell people this all the time. If you are one of those people, you know, who I, I, I'm sure me and Andrew definitely are, who we know people don't like us for whatever reason. Don't yep. act delusional. Don't act fucking delusional about it. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't sit here. I, I hate people like that. I hate people who do things, have said things, and then when... People push back on them and don't want them around. They They're act like, like huh? well, why? What? Why? Why? Why are you acting like that with me? What's the problem? Like, motherfucker, you know exactly why. Like, stop it. Stop it. But I fuck with Zeke, though. Zeke is an alpha male. I heard Zeke got them hands, too, boy. Oh, yeah? He can fight? Man, I heard Zeke will put them fucking paws on Talk you, Talk to bro. me. That's what I heard. I, 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 heard my, I was reading my man Artemis Gordon's Instagram, who I love Artemis Gordon. If you don't follow Artemis Gordon, I have no idea who Artemis Gordon is. He don't put no pictures up of himself. He has no picture of himself, but he be having these great old school stories. Like it's like he knows every fucking thing. He just Guys, was, I love that part of the doc where Zeke goes, they never said none of this to my face. Like he called Jordan and the Bulls pussy. And he basically he was like, yo, Michael yeah. Jordan's a pussy. Scottie Pippen's a pussy. They don't talk that same shit when they're around me. But that's what he said. They said Ooh. like Isaiah, they said Isaiah always stood up for himself. They say Isaiah fought for a lot of causes behind the scene that people didn't know about. Like he was getting his activism on. Okay. They said the, they said the league never wanted him to be a face of the league because they couldn't control him. Uh. You, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't one of those good old... Because you got to think about it. The league was supposed to go Bird, Magic, Jordan. Yep. The Pistons jumped in and disrupted that shit for a couple of seasons. You right. know what I'm saying? And so... Uh, and they said that when, when Isaiah was the type of person that would step to you. And if you said some shit, he want to know what the fuck is going on because he had them goddamn hands. Isaiah from Chicago, let's not get it fucked up. That's true. Like the South Side or some shit like That's that. That's like, true. Isaiah, Isaiah ain't pussy by no means. Mm. So I love, I, you know, the documentary is not finished yet. What? It's not finished. They just uh. finished. They just they just finished episode nine, and um, they putting the finishing touches on episode ten. Oh, you broke they had, my heart, remember, man. I thought they're going to add more episodes. I thought it's not going to be just 10. I thought it was going to be like 12. Oh, no, no, no. They had to move it up. I mean, it's go, it's about to get good. We're about to go on, what, episode 7 and 8? Yeah. I, um, I'm i intrigued, man, and, and I, I never thought about this. And this is how this is how we, you realize we're mere mortals. Okay. Right? And, and And like how you can't, you know, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. In this case, you can't put yourself in somebody else's Jordans. You look at Michael Jordan and you say to yourself, why would he ever walk away? Why would he ever walk away? If you watch that fucking documentary this weekend, you, get it, huh? you realize how exhausted yeah. it is to be him. How much of a lonely life it is to be him. There was no other Michael Jordan. Nobody else could relate to what the fuck Michael Jordan was going through. When he was sitting in his hotel smoking that cigar and just wanting to relax. Do you understand how peaceful that was to Michael? Because from the time Michael stepped out of his hotel, he was bombarded, flooded all the fucking time. And when they started picking him apart in the media, there was a very poignant line in that documentary. Somebody said it. They said that Magic said it. They said that, oh man, I can't remember. It was the news anchor. 
can't remember the news anchor's name right now, but the, the, the sports Not pundit. Am- Ahmad Mashad? Ahmad it wasn't Ahmad Rashad? Rashad. It was the other black brother. It wasn't Ahmad Rashad. The other brother, but he said, <laughs> Yo, sorry, I'm sorry, did you see the meme of Ahmad Rashad going on about his groomsmen for his wedding? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. that. Ahmad had a point, though. OJ Simpson and And Bill Cosby. Cosby OJ, Ahmad had a point, though. I saw Ahmad tweet. Ahmad was real with what he said. Somebody said, yo, Ahmad Ahmad said, because the guy said something something to the effect like, wow, uh, Ahmad Rashad had the most problematic groomsmen of all time or some shit. And Ahmad goes, come on, were they really problematic in the 80s? Did y'all really think that? Yeah. At the time, they were, those are the bells of the fucking ball. At the time, Amara Rashad was the fucking man yeah. to have O.J. Simpson and Bill Cosby in his fucking wedding, bro. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Knock it off. But Magic Johnson said... Uh, was Amara got- Sports Arsenio? Nah. I mean, it seemed nah. like he had this relationship with the players that was different than most of these oh. other like uh, sports journalists. Oh. And that like, Jordan just calls him and, and he's like, hey, I want to talk to you. Let's do an interview. Uh, black Privilege. He was like the only black guy... That's on, what I'm and, saying. Was he and Arsenio? And Did Arsenio? He was an ex-athlete. He was an all-pro. Yeah, he played football. Oh, the Raiders. okay. The they Raiders. saw him as an yeah. athlete. Okay, okay. So there was this like uh, camaraderie uh, as someone who had that experience. Yeah, he used to play for the Raiders. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, and, and and not only that, but he was the only black person in that position at the time on NBC. Like, yeah, he high was profile killing like that. Yeah, he was great. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but go I, on. One of the, you said one of the, one of the. Yeah, one of the sports anchors said that Magic Johnson said, if y'all don't lay off this man, speaking of Michael Jordan. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to walk away from this game. Yeah. Because it was too much for him. So now, think about it. You're already at your breaking point. You're already saying to yourself, man, I think I'm going to walk away from this shit. And then, sadly, your father gets killed. Mm. Like emotionally, mentally, and, and I'm, I'm sure they're going to get to that in the next two episodes. But emotionally and mentally, he had to be over it, bro. Mm. Over it. Motherfuckers be like, yo, but what about all that money? Man, money is not every fucking thing. Money it's, does not buy happiness. Money does not buy peace of fucking mind. When will y'all learn that shit? You know when you learn it? When you get money. When you get fucking money. You can't Why? know that unless you get some money. Yeah. You're right. Nah, you fucking right. Yo, I was thinking about that shit. It made me think about LeBron. I actually posted that. People got mad. I didn't even, I didn't even think. I, I forget that you can't mention LeBron and Michael. I was not making a comparison about them as athletes. There is uh, no yeah, comparison I saw that anymore. Post. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I, w- I was talking about just mental fortitude. But explain the I, post though for everybody who didn't see it. Well, I was talking. Well, let me, let me. You were like, me, what? Like, could Jordan survive in the social media age uh, now? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna read. It. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna read it verbatim because um, I just want to be clear about what the fuck I was saying because people would just be mad about every goddamn thing. Not that I give a fuck, but you know. I can bring it up unless you don't unless you got I got it. I got my laptop right here, baby. I just gotta get back to Sunday. I don't tweet that much, so it should it should be coming up soon. Here we go. Uh here we go, here we go, here we go. Yes, I said, can you imagine if MJ came up in the social media era? I said, watching the media pressure Jordan was under during that first three peat makes you respect LeBron even more for staying sane his entire career. And when you look at LeBron and Michael, they didn't have the same trajectory as far as how they came into the league. LeBron had the spotlight on him since high school in a real way. Right. Like they, they was calling him the chosen one in high school. Right. So, so literally his first game in the NBA, he had all those bright lights around him. And then he actually started succeeding. Right. But now he's living up to expectations, so everything grows. Now you become the biggest ball player of this modern era, right? Yeah. But not only do you got to deal with traditional media, you got to deal with social media. Mm. And the thing that hurts LeBron the most, or I think that put more pressure on him than Jordan, LeBron wasn't winning. When Jordan win, you shut the fucking critics up. Mm. When LeBron wins, whatever you was getting multiplies times 100. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm just like, damn, for LeBron to have the mental fortitude to hear all of this noise all of the time from the critics, from people, from everybody, but still go out there and perform, right? Even if he's not winning championships every year, but just to go out there every night and still average 25, 28, 14, whatever the fuck he's doing, that's commendable, bro. That's fucking commendable. Yeah, it is, man. It's, uh, there was some, there was some fucking bars in there that Jordan really gave us. And, uh, that one thing about, um... Uh, uh, the one thing about like, you're never going to satisfy everyone. I think you, you'll never do everything that they want you to do. 
So if your goal is to try to satisfy every of them, you will always fail. Because, you know what I'm saying? Like, because he's like, if I just want to focus on basketball, of course, the basketball fans are going to be happy. But the people who want me to be an activist are going to be pissed. If I just focus on activism, then the people who just want me to, quote unquote, you know, shut up and dribble or whatever it is, are going to be pissed. Right. And I think he learned that shit the hard way. But low key, you have to satisfy yourself. Absolutely. I think we all have a problem with um, variety. Right. Um, I think we have a problem with variety because when we see something, right, like say Muhammad Ali is this great athlete who sets a certain bar. Right. right? Or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a certain kind of athlete who sets a certain bar. Bill Russell, Jim Brown, whoever it was, they set a certain bar. Uh, or John Carlos, these guys set a bar when it came to athletes using their platform right. to be activists. I think it was shocking to some people that that wasn't Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if I, I don't think that was Magic either at the time. I mean, maybe in the future, maybe. But at the time when Magic was playing ball, that's what we knew Magic for. We didn't know Magic for, you know, making stands against racial injustice or making stands yeah. against social injustice. And by the way, if Michael Jordan just wants to play basketball, he's not hurting anybody yeah. by doing that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and, 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 and listen, I think everybody should use their platform to speak out if they want to. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If you don't yeah. want to, I'm, I, I, I'm not mad at him for that. Like, yeah, you can. And, and, yeah, go on. No, nah, I'm just saying he said he made the comment in just, you know, Republicans buy shoes, too. Yeah, I can totally see that coming out of his mouth, especially after watching the doc. And seeing yeah, it how he seems was like behind a Jordan thing to say, right? Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it, it, it honestly didn't bother me. He said he donated money to the guy's campaign, which, yeah. by the way, probably Helped him more than a fucking Jordan endorsement would anyway. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't know. Yeah. You know, but it's just like, I, I that that part didn't bother me. Like, I'm, I don't look at Michael Jordan the way I look at Muhammad Ali. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. and, 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 and I don't like the whole debate about LeBron's the greatest athlete of all time because of what he does off the court. No. That's not how that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get judged based on what you do on the court if we're talking on the about court. on the court. It's basketball. We talking and, basketball. And low key, like we could we could always go back, like the way that somebody uh, conducts their life and the influence they are to other people and getting into that level of power and the amount of people that you can empower under you, right? Has a huge influence and it is activism in and of itself. That's right? what Michael said. Michael said that my Michael said my I actions. will influence and inspire you through my actions. Yeah. Exactly. And I think we can't discredit that. Now, it's easier to look at a guy like Ali, right, who was out there fighting for it and it was marching and he was willing to go to jail for his principles, et cetera. It's easier to look at him and see what he did, right? If if we put both their careers next to each other, I don't know. Has Did Ali employ more people than Michael, black people specifically? Has Michael put more money in black people's pockets? Maybe has he helped more communities? Has he donated more money to black organizations? Like if we literally oh, go oh. next to each other and put them, maybe Michael has had a greater impact on black progress than Ali did without being an activist. It it's but possible. It, 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 it depends what you call progress. Like, uh, like, like, like financial corporate progress. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure Michael Jordan is leaps and bounds. You know what I mean? But right. when it comes to like, Social progress, it's it's Ali by far. You know what how, I mean? Because I because so? I, I Ali protested, and, and not even just for black people. Ali protested of the Vietnam War for people who just didn't want to go fight in the Vietnam War. He was like, "Yo, my people are over here getting oppressed. Why am I gonna go over there and fight for this country when this country ain't even doing my people right?" But did that stop the war? It didn't stop the war, but he was one of the first people to highlight that it was an unjust war going on, and eventually everybody realized that. Eventually, America realized, you know what? Martin Luther King Jr. was right. You know what? Muhammad Ali was right. You know what? Whoever, whoever was speaking out against the Vietnam War, eventually America realized that they were correct. But some would make the argument that America didn't realize that the war was corrupt until uh, the draft kicked in and all these white kids had to start going to the war and then all of a sudden, their parents were like, yo, 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 why are we sending my parent? Why are we sending my kids to the war? My, I'm rich. My kid's not so supposed they, to fight in wars. And they and they were, and that's basically what Ali then was saying. Right. But, but they just like, were poor. The argument by some would be it wasn't Ali's activism. And then again, I'm not trying to take away nothing from Ali. I think they, it's they, so they great. Bought, they, bought a, they, bought a, they bought a lot of attention to it. 
Hundred percent. Martin Luther King Jr. Muhammad Ali brought a lot of attention. And by the way, I'm sure that it was white people out there who were on the front lines protesting too. They just weren't as famous as Martin Luther King Jr. Muhammad Ali. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No, no. And look, you cannot deny the immense sacrifice that he made because he lost how many, how long of his career because he wouldn't go to the war. Like he was put in prison for it. Yeah. Right? I just think you know. I just think uh, to your point. I just, I just don't think, think you, you can't, can't deny Jordan's effect, man. And we act like he hasn't had a an effect on civil rights or he hasn't had an effect on the progress of black people. But well, I disagree. Well, well, I think that you could probably compare the them civil if you rights. really looked forget, at it. Forget the civil rights. Let's talk about economic empowerment. Boom. Let's talk about the fact that, you know, Michael Jordan changed the way, you know, uh, corporate entities deal with these athletes. He changed the way the NBA had to fucking pay people. You know what I mean? He changed the way that, you know endorsement deals worked. He showed people that they can get equity in sneaker companies. Like, yeah, I mean, that's like, as I said, everybody plays a part. Ali did his part. Jordan came along and he did his part. LeBron's here now. He's doing his part, but they all stand on the shoulders of each other. Sure. They all stand on the shoulders of each other. I just hate that the view of Jordan in a lot of people's eyes is he's some sellout because he didn't speak out verbally. When, if you really look at the impact, he's, he might've had a more profound impact economic impact on black people than um than Ali. He might have. Maybe not. It's, it's possible. And, I, that you and, you gotta, and I'm an Ali guy. No, I get it. It's Love possible. Ali, but I cannot take away Jordan's impact. By man. the way, I'm not I'm not even gonna say it's possible. Yes. I know it's true. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like Jordan yeah. brand is Jordan brand is a multi-billion dollar industry. Yes. I, right. I know it's true. All Jordan's kids work at fucking Jordan brand right, right. now. As they should. By the way, yeah, nepotism at his fucking finest. We had we had uh, all his kids on Breakfast Club this week: uh, Marcus, Jeffrey, and uh, Jasmine. And I just like hearing those stories about how he fucking burnt his daughter's sketchers. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what happened? Set his fucking daughter's sketches on fire. I'm fucking Jordan. I dare you wear his sketches. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Wait, what? Fuck, he set his fucking daughter's sketches on fire. Man, get them shit the fuck out of here. Yeah, <laughs> fucking tie. He tie. He said he tackled his fucking son. One of his sons said, "Man, we was playing football, and uh, you know, uh, we was playing football, and and we was playing it in the house." And he said, "My dad's so competitive. I'm thinking he just about to let me score the touchdown. As soon as I'm about to get across the goal line, boom! <laughs> he hits me so hard that my fucking head hits the glass table. It's blood everywhere. It's bleeding to the white meat. <laughs> all of that shit. And I go, well, first of all." That's your dumb ass for playing football with Michael Jordan. Who the fuck plays football with Michael Jordan? Why the fuck would you play football with Michael Jordan? That's fu- I, don't give that sh- I don't give that's your daddy or not. That's Michael fucking Jordan. Get on the goddamn basketball court and learn something. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. But that's who Michael was. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. I, yeah. I don't know, man. I love, I love, I love living documentaries. Oh, it's the best. I Dude, love documentaries where people are still alive great. and they're telling their own fucking story. Wait a minute. Bro. I let's, love let's that shit. On. Let's go on this. This is great because I just, I, I love it. with a living documentary, you get the feedback of the people in real time. Real time, man. Yes, man. Yes. You man. get to like, ask got- Isaiah what he thinks of what happened. You get to ask Bill and Beer about what he th- we get to ask Tony Kukoc about how he felt like, yeah, all document, not all, obviously you can't, but like we should do as many documentaries about shit that happened not too long ago so that we could still hear the truth about it from the people that were there. Yeah, his um his kids said that they interviewed Michael Jordan three times for the doc. Uh-huh. He said that they interviewed Michael initially and then they went and talked to other people, told them things Michael said, and then took that back to Michael so Michael could go could respond respond yeah man that's why when they show him when they like I'm gonna show you what Isaiah said remember they showed that part like that is what happened and you know how competitive Michael is if they're gonna talk some shit then Michael's gonna get honest about absolutely, it absolutely goddamn absolutely, uh, absolutely and man, I would save I love all it. the questions until that tequila he's drinking was about halfway gone <laughs> I'd ask him the fluffy bullshit up top and then once that tequila hit about halfway mark oh how you feel you know, about you, IT Yo, I, at first I thought that was cognac. I think you might be right. It might be tequila because his kids have their own tequila. Yeah, they have a tequila brand. Yeah, and that I their father it's, it, their father invested in, but it's the kids running this shit. Oh, that's fire. Yeah, man. That's fire. On, See what fire? Happens, that's, what, bro? that's life. That's what the fuck you're supposed to do. That's fire, ne- dog. Nepotism works all with everybody. That's why when you open up a fucking 
tub of nepotism ice cream is black, vanilla, and strawberry. Neapolitan. <laughs> whatever whatever it fucking works right. okay it, it fucking works nepotism Neapolitan it works for everybody god damn it all right just put it put the strawberry people in the position with the chocolate people and the vanilla people and we all can eat oh fuck dog let's pay some bills man. i gotta piss me too bro you wanna Hold pause on. and we'll, piss we'll, i all gotta right. run pee we'll do a little break uh, and then we'll pay right. all right Pause. All right, let's pay some bills real quick, man. Uh, salute to Squarespace. Turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're looking to start a new business, showcase your work, publish content, sell products, and so much more. Squarespace is the tool for you with beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks, you can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality lets you sell anything online and analytics helps you grow your site in real time. Everything is optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever. Buying domains is simple. And you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms, which we haven't been in in a long time. Okay, but they empower them to turn great ideas into something real. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash idiot. Offer code idiot. Today's Brilliant Idiots episode is also... Brought to you by Postmates. Uh, I know I, Postmates has been there for y'all during this quarantine. Because other than your absolute best friends, who you probably haven't seen because you've been social distancing, who can you reach out to to bring you red wine at 4 p.m., sushi at 9 p.m., and a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? Postmates, come on, man. Postmates, they've been essential workers during this quarantine. They are heroes, okay? Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. No more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you, okay? Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour. Now, let's get back to the show. Now, Taylor, you know what? We don't, when, when, when we do the deep dives and stuff, all we got to do is put the, uh, oh shit, I'm not doing Postmates, never mind. What? I'm not, it's not done. I forgot to do the red part. Um, anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. For a limited time, Postmates has given our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. To start your free deliveries, download the app right now and use the code IDIOTS. That's code IDIOTS for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days. When you download the Postmates app, get anything you need anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with code IDIOTS. Let's get back to the show. Andrew, you got any church announcements, baby? Shit. I wish. <laughs> church is closed. <laughs> I wish the church is closed. Yo, is check, rough? Out, check out the Biden piece that we did every week, every Saturday. We drop a new piece. And um, I think it's a, a really cool lane that we've found in uh, that uh, is empty right now in comedy, which is like a, a comedy without any kind of political bias about talking about, you know, an issue that happened this week. We take one issue, one thing that um, we feel strongly about. And then uh, we just write a piece on it and then put it out. And I go straight to camera. And um, it's just it. really cool to see people respond to it because again, like, you know, a lot of these guys that are attached to a network, you know, a network for the most part is going to be a, po you know, a political marketing arm for one of these, you know, groups. And uh, we decide not to do that. We're just going to do the funniest joke and the funniest take regardless of, you know, who it aligns with. So it's cool to see people, Respond, man. And thank you for reposting that. I appreciate that. Nice, nah, dope, man. Um, also, I want you to go to my YouTube page. You know, I've been, um, what I've been attempting to do is, you know, share tools and resources that I use, not just in my everyday life, but things that are actually helping me get through, you know, the quarantine. And, you know, it's not like I can share my therapist with people. You right. know what I mean? So, you know, when I do my teletherapy, that's between me and my therapist. But, you know, I, I read a lot, you know, and I love... Deepak Chopra and I love Don Miguel Ruiz and I got to salute my sister Devi Brown who I absolutely positively adore that's been my homie for like 13 shit 13 years now damn maybe longer 12 13 years something like that 
And, you know, um, watching Dev grow in that mindfulness space, the way that she has, you know, um, you know she, she, she's got books out, you know, about crystal stones. You know what I mean? She got her podcast, Dropping Gems. Like, she's really in that mindfulness space. And, you know, her and Deepak Chopra have connected on a real level. And she was like, yo, you got to sit with Deepak. You know, and she's, you know, made a couple of those those meetings happen. We were all supposed to go to his retreat um, this month, but of course that's not happening. So I interviewed Deepak a couple of weeks ago via Zoom and that was a great conversation. And then me and him did an Instagram live together and both of those are up on YouTube. But also Don Miguel Ruiz, man, you know, I've been a big fan of Totic Wisdom forever. You know, the four agreements, the fifth agreement, you know, um, the, the, the mastery of love, the voice of knowledge. Like these are books that I've, I've, I've read in my life that have really you know, help me out. And I randomly just reached out to Don Miguel Ruiz via the DM. <laughs> like, I just sent him a DM like, yo, is this Charlemagne the God? Uh, I, you know, I would love to interview Don. I explained who I was because I don't didn't assume that he knew. Mm-hmm. And they hit me right back. Really? Like, Charlemagne, yes, we would love for Don to sit with you like, oh, so... Thank you to Carla Ruiz. I don't know what, what relation Carla is to Don, but Carla made that happen in two seconds. Like, li- I literally sent him a DM. Like, literally, like, man, I got to talk to fucking Don McGarrow. Uh, like, and I did. So, you know, next on my list is Judy Bloom. If I can get fucking Judy Bloom, baby. The, man, if I can get Judy Bloom. What? The kids, the kids book author, Judy Bloom? You goddamn right. Interesting. Judy okay. Bloom shaped my formative fucking years. What were the books you wrote? Like some murder mysteries or like mysteries? Hell no. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Blubber. Fucking um, Freckles. Freckle Juice. Oh, no. I oh, that was a man. fourth grade nothing. No, that wasn't Judy. Oh, no, that was Judy. Tell them fourth grade nothing. I was about to say that was Ramona Quimby. No, that was uh, Beverly Clearly. No, tell them fourth grade nothing was Judy Bloom. Like Judy Bloom yeah. absolutely motherfucking like help craft my formative years. When my mama told me to read things that don't pertain to you, that's the first shit I started reading. Judy Shit about, shit about little white girls. Okay. Little white future Karens. All right. (laughs) And it motherfucking helped me out a lot. So if I can sit down with Judy Bloom, cause she's much older and they say she got like this coffee shop somewhere and they say people literally go and sit in this coffee shop and just wait to see her. They say she comes by the coffee shop every now and then, but, Man, I don't give a fuck if I get to do a Zoom or in person. If I get to, it probably be over Zoom. But if I get to sit down with Judy Bloom, I will feel like I have done something in my life. Why, uh, what would you ask her? What are you curious about? What is? A lot. I mean, just for me, um, like I said, my mom told me to read things that don't pertain to me. Uh-huh. And it's like, for whatever reason, it just opened up my my mind to a, not only a whole new world, but just a, a, a different demographic of people, so to speak. Okay. You know what I mean? Because even, you know, growing up where I grew up in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, it's, it's, it's not like, you know, like, like Thomas, my guy, Tom, Tom is, was my first white friend. Yeah. But I didn't look at Tom as white. So we yeah. was just two kids living on a dirt road. So our experiences were pretty much the same. You know right. what I mean? Like culturally, like, it wasn't that different. Culturally, it wasn't different. When yeah. I read Judy Bloom books, culturally, those people's lives were fucking different. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Like, like, ask me, mom, what's a suburb? Uh, mom, what's a suburb? What is this? Co- coal? Cul-de-sac. Cold, uh, cold, cold de sac Like, so it's just like, yeah. And even just like, uh, you know, um, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. Like, even the struggle of the insecurities of a woman who wanted breasts. Ah. Regardless if it was a woman or not and the woman wanted breasts, anybody can relate to the insecurity of wanting something that you don't and, have and you don't have it yet, yeah. but yet it's coming. You're a right. child. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so when you're a young kid growing up a, on a dirt road in Moscow to South Carolina, yeah, you don't have the things that you want yet. Right. But it's like, yo, her mantra was, I must, I must, I must increase my bus. Everybody can have a mantra that they repeat over and over and over and over and over that right. sights them up to get what the fuck they want. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I just I just think I, I feel like her books uh had a real impact on me when I was a kid. But long story short, go to my YouTube page, youtube.com backslash C to God, C T H A G O D, and you can go uh watch the interview with Don Miguel Ruiz as well as Deepak Chopra. 
Now, you yeah, can- you make an interesting point. Oh, also, by the way, YouTube pages, uh, do us a favor. Go subscribe to the uh, Brilliant Idiots Clips YouTube page where we cut up a lot of the conversations we have and we put those out as clips. And we're trying to build that up, man, so that they can uh, hit that YouTube algorithm. So if you could go to YouTube.com slash Brilliant Idiots Clips, um, that would really help us out. So make sure you do that. But you make an interesting point about like reading things that don't apply to you at all. Like, I think reading a lot of ways is like a form of travel. That makes sense. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like you get to be a voyeur in this world that has nothing to do with you if you choose to read something like that and really learn a lot about it in an intimate way. And for people who don't have tons of money or for people who don't have the access to uh, to travel, it probably means everything to them. It's like, whoa, you got to take me to Paris when I read this or you got to take me to some white girls, uh, you know, house in the suburbs. When I read, you know, uh, some Judy Bloom, but uh, uh, reading is reading is what helped me transcend my circumstances. Reading and music, yeah, reading and music. I didn't get on a plane until I was twenty one years old, bro. So wow. think about that. You know what I'm saying? I didn't get on a plane until I was twenty one years old. It's not like I like you know we drive down to Miami, I drive down to Orlando where my aunt lived. Right. Uh, drove drove to New York or New Jersey where my my other aunts and uncles live, but. Just to get on a plane to actually travel for myself, I didn't do that till I was twenty one. Fucking. Were you years nervous old. when you did it? Like, what was that reaction at first? Uh, it was after nine eleven, so hell fucking yeah. It was <laughs> after nine eleven. First time I ever got on a plane was after nine eleven happened. And and so what was going on? Uh, actually, it was interesting because my 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 OG, Doctor Robert Evans, Doctor Robert Evans, actually said, "Are you kidding me? It's the safest time to fucking fly right now." Oh, of course. <laughs> and so yeah, and so so that's what I did. I had my little cloth suitcase. I remember that vividly. I remember landing at the airport, getting my luggage, and him, Doctor Evans, laughing at me like a motherfucker because I had like I never traveled. I had like my mom's old suitcase. ass fucking cloth suitcase. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I I know I look fucking crazy, but I never had traveled, so it was like. It was just something new. So I wasn't nervous per se. It was just a like, new experience. I feel like when we do things as kids, right? Like we forget the initial emotions we've had with them. You know, like the mm. first time I went swimming, I can't remember it. So I can't remember what it was like to just be in water and floating. Like, and then it's just become part of who I am. Right. So I'm curious at 21, the first time you're flying, like, are you looking out the window scared shitless? Like, are you accepting what this is? I'm Could sure, you I'm re- sure. react? Or relax at all when you're in the air? I think I might. I'm sure I had a panic attack. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. me, it just felt, it felt, I remember having a feeling of like I was really um, accomplishing shit in life because I was uh, I was doing full-time radio on Hot 98.9 in Charleston, South Carolina at the time. So I used to do Monday through Friday, 7 to midnight. I was only making 19 grand a year, but I didn't give a fuck. I was the man in my city. Ain't nobody fucking with me. Right. Um, uh, you can ask all the bad bitches and all the real niggas. Uh, and then- um, And all the what? All the bad bitches and all the real what? <laughs> it's a T.I. line. T.I. Uh, say, I'm the man in my city. Ain't nobody fucking with me. You can have the bad bitches and all the real niggas. I'm a known drug dealer. I always had killers and the thugs and the killers was all the class with me. But I flew to New York from Charleston and I just felt like the man. <laughs> and I was going to New York because I was doing A&R for Never So Deep Records at the time, you know, which was a record label that was a, subsidi- a subsidiary of MCA. So I just really felt like I was moving in life. That's what I, that's how I honestly felt. That's what I remember feeling. I remember feeling like, oh shit, I'm in New York. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm, I'm living, I'm living that life. And I had a hundred dollars. I had a hundred dollars the whole time I was here in New York. How long were you here? Shit, I think I was here for like four days. Four fucking days for a hundred dollars. And I remember the first day, me and my dude, DJ Bless, salute to DJ Bless. We went into the, I don't know if it was a bodega. It was some type of store in New York. We ordered like hoagies and that shit was like $15. And I was like, I ain't going to make it for four fucking days. If this, <laughs> how this, if this, how this shit is going, I'm not going to be able to fucking make it. If hoagies are fucking $15, it's the first fucking day. I've been in for two hours. This shit ain't going to cut it, bro. So yeah, I don't know. That's interesting, right? That whole feeling of um, what the first time feels like. I always feel like that first time you don't really have any emotions towards anything. If, 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 if you're not, if somebody doesn't sour you to the experience, right? If somebody doesn't tell you what they expect, you don't really have no expectations of shit. Right. I don't think so anyway. I think your expectations are built up uh, based on what you like see and hear, right? So you've seen and heard people fly and talk about it and 
probably all the times you saw people flying in movies, it was like some, you know, plane crash yeah. or, and, <laughs> or and this was after, this was after nine eleven. Yeah, yeah absolutely. so that's all you're thinking about, and that's going to inform your feelings in a moment. Absolutely. Let's let's do some shit you won't care about next week. Oh man. yeah, what you got? And did you um, deep dive? I mean, the deep dive can either be the Bulls thing. Or, oh, I got a good deep dive, bro. Okay. Holy fucking shit. By the way, we can deep dive more than once in the podcast. Facts. We can deep dive a few times. Okay, go. Man, 50 Cent had a, a, a conversation with our guy, Van Layton. Okay. And um, Van asked him, does he love his son, his first son? And 50 said, I used to, right? And he said he went on to quote his grandfather. He said, if it slithers like a snake, is it a snake or do you need to be bit? But what 50 said that was so interesting to me, 50 said, um, I guess you got to ask yourself the question, how long do you continue to love something that doesn't love you back? Ooh. It's a great fucking question. I mean, the answer to that question is, if it's your kid until you die. Yeah, right? That's your kid, bro. It's, It's different. You can't abandon that kid. If he doesn't love you, you have to understand he's a child. You know, he's yeah. a child and... Children, you know, correct their ways, but children can be a pain in the ass. And I'm sure he has his reasons for not liking his dad. I bet you a lot of the reasons have to do with the baby mother, though. Sure. Because you never know what the baby mother has put in the child's head over the years. Because a lot of times it's, it's like a transfer of energy, right? You're mad at the father. The father ain't shit. The person that's around you all the time is your child. The child is witnessing y'all argue. The mm-hmm. child is witnessing you tell your homegirls and other family members how he ain't shit. And, you know, eventually that pain you feel because you don't like your the father sometimes can go into the child. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I respect it. I get why any child would ride with the mom. But I think a guy like, uh, the, the you know, the young brother, 50, um, I think his name is Marquise. I think Marquise, you know, God, God, God forbid, because, you know, I want everybody to have have kids with the person they plan to marry. But if he does have a baby's mother one day. You're going to understand the baby, the baby mother, baby mother puts him on on that kind of pressure, under that kind of pressure. I think he'll understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've seen that happen a million times. I've seen sons hate the fathers until they get put in that position, and then they understand the dynamic between a father and a mother. Right? They understand that shit ain't sweet. Mm. They understand that. Look, son, I'm not around you because I don't love you. I'm mm. not around you because she won't let me. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not just abandoning you. I'm not coming around because she won't give me that. She won't allow me to. Right. You know? So I, I I think that um yeah, I think that is a thing. What do you what do you think about when do you stop loving something? I mean, I, I would hope back? that I never could stop loving my kid. I really would hope that. And I'd hope I'd have the wisdom to go, one day he's gonna understand this. And I would never want to say something on a podcast like I don't love him anymore because yeah. he's gonna hear that shit. And what low about, key, I, if you're saying it on a podcast, you want him to hear it. What about outside the kids, though? Because this can this can go into oh, you know, people who it. have dreams. Nah, fuck it, you're dead to me. If you <laughs> if you're a snake and you <laughs> hold on, if somebody if somebody is disloyal to me, and oh yeah, is yeah, a yeah, snake yeah. to me. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah, loving yeah. him forever. You got nah. what is it called? My love is conditional, bro. My love is absolutely goddamn Come on, conditional. Man. I don't play that shit. Uh-uh. I have a question. Oh God! What'd you say, Taylor? I have a question. What if your son or child um, did something like against the law, like, like what? So they kill someone or they rape someone or whatever? Like, can you still love that person? I don't think that you can turn it off. I don't think you can turn it off. Like, if you love them, you love them. You you could be mad at them and angry at them and pissed off at them and disappointed and embarrassed and all of that shit. But that's still. Your fucking child. That's why I always say, if your mother abandons you, you really a piece of shit. Because don't nobody love you unconditionally like a fucking mom. Like your so mom, if you, if, though. If, That's if, a if, fact. If your mom, if your mom cuts you off, you really a piece of shit, bro. Yeah. Nah, that's too far. If your mom cuts you off, that's that's too far. That's too but yeah, I hear what far. you're saying, Taylor. It's tricky. Like, if they do something absolutely horrendous, can you stop loving your kid? Like, if your kid kills your wife and his mom. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think you'll stop loving them. I think it'll hurt more because you loved them so much. I think you can simultaneously hate somebody and love them at the same time, though. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? I don't think you turn love off because because think about it. You're always going to have those memories. So even if somebody does something that horrendous to you, right, mm-hmm. you're still going to think about all those times before the hypothetical pre-murder of, you know, and you're going to feel mom. responsible. You're like, what could I have done differently? How could I have raised them differently? Why does yeah. he have all this hate in him? Maybe if I was there more. But sometimes we don't realize that, yo, all you can do is the best you can. That's what Don Miguel Ruiz says. That's the fourth agreement in the, the four agreements. Always do your best. If I did my best as a child, I mean, as a parent, I'm not responsible for what you fucking do as an adult. Yeah. Once but- you get to a certain point, you start making your own choices and your own decisions. That's on you. Because all I could do for you is what I could do. Something else can shape other things in you other than right, me. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Let me like, ask you a question. Fault. Are you doing your best in combing your beard? Because you haven't stopped doing that this entire podcast. Because I got fucking, I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm like, I don't know what you would call this shit. It's OCD? Like, I think it's OCD, bro. I think like, it's comb, I- bro. I think that shit might be perfect by now. Like. I just keep doing it. Bro. I be, I be doing that shit through my head, too. I just ain't got the kind of pick I want. Because, you know, um, my, 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 my sister Tiffany Haddish, you know, Tiffany hit me one day. She was very concerned right. about my hair, very concerned about my hairline. Yeah. And um, she told me that I should try Monistat 7 and Jamaican castor oil. She said, take the Monistat 7, put it inside the Jamaican castor oil, mix it up, and start applying that to your hair. Apply it to the bald spots because she said your hair isn't fucked up. She was like, you have a hairline that can be restored. Right. You just have You just have patches. I've been doing that shit, bro. I've been doing that shit for like a week and I've been seeing some results. What And what has happened? Did the yeast infection go away? I think that shit is going away, bro. Well, that's good. I think, I think my fucking hair is growing out a little bit, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. You want to show us or you want to wait till like next week to I'm really wait, get I'm going? I'm going to wait till next week when I got a nice little fro. All right. Nice little, it's, it's about right there, right there. I'm going to let it grow another inch like that. You All know right. what I'm saying? All right. Uh, okay. Also, shit you won't care about next week, Tyra fucking Banks. What did Tyra do? Talking about hairlines. It's not Tyra. It's people upset over Tyra's old comments from America's Next Top Model. What she said? I really, I really need to know who the fuck you people are that wake up on a random Tuesday because it was Cinco de Mayo when this shit happened. A random taco fucking Tuesday, and start attacking Tyra Banks for old shit she said. On a talk show that was one of the biggest shows out. But but what was it though? It had reruns. It was just simple shit. It was like they flipped the meme on her when she was lying and when she was yelling at the girl saying, we was all rooting for you. We was all rooting for you. Yeah. Now all of a sudden that meme y'all have been using for years, y'all think is mean. There was another scene where she was talking to a girl and she said that her gap tooth wasn't going to allow her to make it in the modeling world. And then they cracked some jokes. And then there was another one where they she she made a white girl actually shave her tooth down to have a gap because she said that was the new the new it thing. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> she made a girl shave her teeth to have Listen, a gap. That's crazy, I, something, bro. Something like that. If you were a, if you were a person back in the day who watched that and you felt offended by her making fun of the girl's gap, I totally understand. That's how you felt back then. That shit ain't gonna change now. You probably still hate that shit. But for all you Johnny come latelys. All you new motherfuckers who never heard of America's Next Top Model and y'all are just getting these clips from fucking Twitter and the like and y'all are going in on Tyra and posting about Tyra. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Like, do y'all lay this shit out on the bed the night before and say tomorrow we gonna kill Tyra because of these fucking comments? Like, I am just so sick of motherfuckers getting in trouble for for shit that they said back in the day, Mm -hmm. especially when that shit was made public for everybody. These ain't no secret recordings. This is shit we all heard back then and nobody gave a fuck. In fact, it was one of the highest rated shows on television. Once again, I'm going to use this analogy and I need y'all to understand this. Uh If the highway said 70 miles per hour 20 years ago and I was doing 70, now that the same highway, the speed limit is 55 and I'm doing 55 out of respect because I understand the fucking rules and regulations of the land. Right. Don't start sending me goddamn speeding tickets from 20 years ago when I was going 70. This shit don't make no fucking sense, bro. What if we have a statute of limitations on canceling people for what they say? And First of all, the there's statute, no such thing as cancel culture. That say what? Good. No, I hear what you're saying. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what if the statute of limitations is five years, right? Because a lot can change in five years. Sentiments can change in five years. 
right? Four, I say four. Four is always a good number because it's graduation. Sure, four years. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So for anything more than four years ago, you cannot cancel. Because I'm gonna be you honest don't with know you. what the culture was four years ago. If it's said publicly, yeah. on TV, radio, podcast, yeah. you got 24 hours, maybe 48. Fuck that. Four years is too long. You got 20 for real? Yo, you got 24 hours, maybe fucking 48. What y'all gonna do next? Y'all gonna attack and live in color? Y'all about to come after Keenan and the Wayans brothers now because of the edgy shit that they used to do? Right. The fuck? You gonna come after Chappelle? You gonna go after old SNL show? Like, what is next? Like, what's next? Why do we do this? Like, yeah. why do people give a fuck? Like, listen, and by the way, you have every right to be mad on social media. If you wanna be mad on social media, cool, nobody gives a fuck. Right. As long as that shit don't affect Tyra Banks in the real corporate world, I'm cool. But that shit is just stupid to me. Like, all of this shit you have to be outraged at. It's, Andrew, yeah. it is so much shit you could be outraged about right now in 2020. Why do you have to dig up shit from 20 years ago when the climate was different? They about to attack the bad boy Pistons, bro. <laughs> How so? They about, to, they about to attack the bad boy Pistons and say that they were a bunch of fucking thugs. They could have killed Scottie Pippen. They could have killed Michael Jordan. They need to be brought up on charges. This should have been assault, okay? Why wasn't fucking Bill Lambert ever arrested? I'm telling you. Yeah. They keep, if you keep letting this type of shit happen, this what the, this how far it'll fucking go, man. I hate that shit, yo. I can't fucking stand it. <laughs> I agree shit. with you, man. I think it's... I think it's bullshit, and I think it's it's true. It's something we won't care about next week. That's the yeah, beauty man. of this shit. Is like everybody gets upset, and then they completely forget about it next week. And maybe that's why we resent them so much for it, because we're like, you don't care. You just want retweets. You just want you attention. Just want retweets. You are you fraudulent. You have told someone that they were a gap tooth idiot in your life. Now Tyra does it on a TV show when she's trying to help this chick become a model. Models are about objectifying themselves, right? Like, that's literally what it is. You want to be the most objectifiable person. That's what being a model is. If she's giving you advice on how to be objectified better, you better take that shit. <laughs> right? Like, what are you upset about her for? It's her job to tell you what's wrong with you and why you're not objectifiable. Yo, you you're got not a hole in your teeth. Okay? We can't objectify you as good with a hole in your teeth. Oh, you get that shit God. fixed, boom. Now we could objectify you better. It's that simple. Especially, especially back then when there was like a strict criteria to be a model. Yeah, there was none of these you know fat saying? models. There was none of these retard models. There was none of these like, I think they're making Down syndrome models. Like they're doing, edit, like there's a model in a re wheelchair. Is There's none of these like special needs models. It was just, are you hot? Or are you not hot? Right? Ira also put a big girl model in the um, America's Top Model though. Like she was one of the first that to promote it. But that was a well, later season. No, it wasn't. That was like the second season. I don't even know. Oh, that was Takara, right? Yeah. And what happened with her? She's she still ate on craft service or something Stop. like that. Takara had a good. She lost Takara, weight. Takara had a good career, but she lost weight though, right? But she's still like thick. She's not like. Taylor, I love the fact you coming to defend your people. Yo, you defend them plus size models, Taylor. You know what? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you, you stand your fucking ground when it comes to those plus size models, Taylor. Don't you let uh, don't let Andrew talk crazy. I hate hey, plus bro, size models. That shit is so stupid. What? All this shit. Listen, uh, Nicholas Cage. Shit, you won't care about next week. Nicholas nah, Cage. Nah, nah, nah. Don't talk about the goat, bro. He's, he's hey, playing George. Hey, hey, don't talk about Nick. Nicholas Cage the best. Listen, we spoke about this on Flavor too, but Nicholas Cage is the greatest living American actor, and don't ever stop come it. at the goal like stop, that, bro. Stop, stop, stop. You don't stop. ever come at the goal stop. like that's that, not, bro. That's not Nicholas Cage is not the greatest living he's American. He's the greatest actor. living American actor. Don't Wait, ever did, come at the goal like that, bro. Last I checked, Tom Hanks didn't die of corona. Okay. Tom Hanks not even top five. Get the fuck out of here, Andrew Tom Schultz. Hanks not even top five, bro. Get the bro. fuck out of here, bro. Nah, Tom dude. Hanks is the one. Nah, bro. Are you see you're not you're not you're on what drugs. What did he do good in? What he do good in? What did he what did he not do Forrest good Gump? in? Um, right, amazing. Oscar. What? Amazing. Forrest Gump. What else? Fucking big. Fucking castaway. What was so good about Big? What do you mean? What was so good about Big? I don't know, bro. That shit sucked. When the last time you seen Big? I don't even think I've seen it. That's how bad it was. Yeah, man, Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks is the fuck. Let me pull up Tom Hanks' resume nah, compared bro. to Nicolas Cage. Tom Hanks Cage. is trash. Nicolas Cage. Son, 
Nicholas Cage is a bootleg Keanu Reeves. Yo, yo, bro. yo, stop talking about him yo, crazy, bro. Hey, 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 hey. You're talking about the go Keanu crazy Reeves, right bro. now, bro. You really talking about the go crazy. Oh, man. Hold on, let's talk. Hold on. You talking about Forrest Gump. You talking Castaway, Saving Private Ryan. Castaway, Big. trash. Fucking Philadelphia. Saving Private what? Ryan. What? Saving Private Ryan was fire. It was fire. Did you say Castaway was trash? Castaway was trash. I can't watch that Come shit on, again. stop, bro. Stop. The Green Mile, Sully, the Da Vinci Code. Nobody saw Sully. Da Vinci Code, he ruined. Yo. What? To- Come on, bro. I read the book. Toy- it was supposed Toy to be story. Richard Gere. Say it again. Toy Story. Toy Story. All right, I'll give you Toy Story. Toy Story kind of lit. Toy Story Philadelphia. Philadelphia, bro. I didn't watch that shit. You watched that shit? Uh, yes. With Denzel? You Fuck didn't, yeah. He, wait a minute. Denzel was in Philadelphia? Yeah. Who was he? The lawyer? I don't fucking remember. Let me see. Am I tripping? Yeah, Denzel. No, I'm not bugging. Yeah, Denzel was in Philadelphia. Hey, fucking, anyway. Um, Tom Hanks, decent actor. Decent bro, actor. Nick Cage. Nicholas Cage bro? ain't got no fucking splash. Hey, bro. Hey, Nick Cage, bro. Let's talk about it. He never did splash, hey, bro. Hey, 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 hey. Nick Cage, though? Gone in 60 seconds. Cute. F- face off. Classic. Lord of because War. Of, because, because of Travolta. Lord of Come War. On. Travolta carried Nicolas Cage nah, in fucking stop face that. off. You need to stop that. Travolta carried. Travolta you carried. That. You're acting he crazy carried, right now. And you bro. know why he carried it? Because when they told him he'd be face to face with a man the whole movie, he was like, I Travolta can't bought his A game. <laughs> He's like, he said, he said, he said, hold on, you get to be inside Nick Cage's body. He's like, dreams do come true. You get to have Nicolas Cage's face on your face the whole movie. Holy shit. Nine John Travolta up, goddammit. I I bet you go look at the fucking B-roll for that shit. He had a fucking heart on the whole goddamn movie. Damn right. That's what Nick Cage does to you, bro. Come on, give me some other Nick Cage shit. Who else? Con Air. Con Air. You're forgetting about Vampire's Kiss. That shit sound like the Travolta was in that shit too. Vampire's Kiss, Con Air, bro. There's literally you cannot find a bad Nick Cage movie. They're amazing. He's amazing. He got a I fucking fuck Oscar. He does everything. He does comedy. He does drama. He does action. So does Johnny. Nah. I mean, not Johnny. So does fucking Stop. Tom. Tom cannot do. Tom bro, cannot Tom, do. Tom is, Tom is the most diverse actor of our Stop generation. Stop that. Bro. Stop that. Tom tried to do Road to Perdition. That shit was trash because he can't play a tough guy. Tom got one character. He's inc- incredibly likable. Stop. He's a super sweet soft guy. He plays that perfectly. He cannot play anything else. He can play super sweet soft guy. That's Tom. Super sweet soft guy. I can't wait. I can't wait till Tom Hanks plays both Phil Jackson and Michael Jordan in the goddamn Chicago Bulls. You gonna let uh, Tom Hanks blackface, bro? I need I need him you to prove let that Tom he's the, I need I need him I need him to prove that he's the greatest living actor of all time, and that's the only way he'll be able to do it. Okay? Will you let him blackface to do it? Will you let Tom Hanks blackface to do it? Michael Jordan's not black; he's Michael. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he can Mike um, face. Can nah, he Mike face? Him do that. But I don't know. Can I, Tom I, Hanks I, Mike face to play Michael nah, Jordan he, in a book? He can't. He can't Mike face. He can do Phil Jackson though. Obviously, he could do Phil Jackson. Bro, all Nicholas does is action movies, man. Stop playing, bro. Raised in Arizona. That's all he does. Raised in Arizona. Never saw it. I thought that shit was about him drinking fucking iced tea. It was. It was? Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't know what the fuck that was. Ghost 100%. Rider, like all that. Ghost I, I, Rider, know. bro. That's action. Uh, Dog. That's National Treasure. That's all he does. I'm telling you, we had this whole conversation. Action. National Treasure, two. action. N- Nicholas National Cage is Treasure never- is not action. It's like... Uh, mystery, suspense, you know, treasure hunting. Nicolas Cage has never been in a movie without a gun. Say again? Nicolas Cage has never been in a movie without a gun. Ghost Rider. Moon, moonstruck. Moonstruck. Leaving moonstruck. Las Vegas or something that like that. That old shit? That old shit? Come on, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Nicolas Cage is the greatest living American actor. It's nah, either him. With Tom, bro. The greatest living American actor in terms of how dynamic they are. It's either him or... um. What's the guy who's in Cheers? He was the funny guy in Cheers. Fucking um uh Chevy, not Chevy Chase, fucking nah. Dan Aykroyd? Nah. He played him. His not name. Dan Aykroyd. I know you're talking about um Whoopi Goldberg's ex-husband. What the no, fuck? Was no, no, not him. That's Ted Danson. Oh. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson and Woody Harrelson here, and um and Nicolas Cage are the greatest living American actors. 
Simple as that. In terms of how dynamic they are. Tom Hanks nah, doesn't First exist. All, Tom Hanks got nothing on Denzel, so don't even talk to me about Tom Hanks. Like, Denzel is leagues above Tom Hanks. We don't even have to have that conversation. Well, you talk about godlike actors. Obviously, I'm talking about godlike actors. Nick Cage. Nicholas with Keanu Reeves, bro. Say again? Nicholas with Keanu Reeves, and nah, I love nah, Keanu. Nah, like, first of all, you're trying to say that as a thing of disrespect, and Keanu it's Reeves not. is unbelievable. Keanu's a beast. Say again? Keanu's a beast. Keanu is a beast, bro. He's a beast. He Keanu got some of my favorite John movies. Wick movies. He said four words in all three movies, bro. And, he and said all four over a fucking. words in all three movies. Name one other actor could do that. And all over a fucking dog. That's it. And Peter, and Peter never gave fucking Keanu a goddamn award. Not a thing. Give him a fucking award. I love Keanu Reeves. Devil's Advocate, one of my favorite fucking that, movies. There we go. The, fir the first Matrix. But to me, Keanu, Nicolas Cage, they're all on the same level. And by the way, it's a great level. I'm not That's saying Mount I'm not Rushmore. shitting on What him. you're talking about is Mount Rushmore. You're talking about Mount Rushmore of actors is Keanu Reeves, Nicolas Cage, and Woody Harrelson. Okay. Get the fuck out of here! Nah, ducks. Who, who does Woody make it over? Woody don't make it over Denzel? Woody, Woody no, don't make it over Tom? Denzel is fourth. Denzel is fourth. Denzel bro, Woody barely don't make it, makes no. it in. He barely no, makes it in, but no, he's bro. fourth. No. Denzel Woody can't do comedy, but he's so good at the drama, and he's so good at the action that you have to give it to him. Woody did not make it over Tom, bro. I Honestly, John C. O'Reilly almost makes it over Denzel. John C. O'Reilly almost makes it over Denzel. I don't even know who, the fuck that, is. I don't even know who that is. <laughs> if I'm who the fuck is John C. O'Reilly? To be honest, I'm being honest. I have no idea who the fuck Pat Riley Seal is. Yo, listen, John C. O'Reilly, bro. He can do drama. He is. can do comedy. He can do multi. It's dynamic. Notice we haven't said one female actor or actor. Notice not a single female actress comes close. Just oh, that's because that. we're fucking sexist. We're sexist pigs. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Yo. <laughs> John C. Riley. John C. Riley. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> John I C. Never, Riley. Listen, I don't even know his name. I know his face, and I've always hated his face. No, but, you, he's but, in, but he's in fucking. He's he was fucking in Ralph breaks the fucking internet. That's I hate John what C. I'm Riley. talking about. Wreck it, Ralph. Wreck it, Ralph. My he's man, Wreck it, Ralph. He's a goddamn joke. Nah, dog. Those are really Mount Rushmore. I so he, think John C. John C. Riley was in. Day, I never knew his name. He was in Days of Thunder. I never knew his name, bro. Look, I never John knew his C. fucking name. Mount Rushmore is, and I'm biased because I love Denzel. But if I was being objective, completely objective, Mount Rushmore, John C. Riley, stop. Keanu Reeves, stop. Nicholas Cage. Honestly, I take John C. Riley out. It's Denzel, Woody Harrelson, Nicholas Cage, and then the other one. I got Denzel. Tom Hanks. Not Tom Hanks. It's it's preposterous. It's preposterous what you just You're said. crazy. It's He's preposterous. Yo, Tom Hanks' roles are so diverse, bro. It's like, the I, same I, thing every single time. It, it really is. It's the isn't. same thing every, every it single really time. It really isn't. Middle-aged, emotional Bar white guy. Middle-aged, emotional white guy. It's hard to play that. And make people give a fuck for you. Think about it. For <laughs> Think you. About it. Think about it. Think about I'm being a middle aged emotional white guy my entire life. We felt bad for Tom Hanks in Castaway. We felt bad for him in Forrest Gump. We felt bad for him in Big. You know how hard it is to get a black man to feel bad for a privileged white man? He was on an Woo! island. He was on an island with a volleyball and then he was retarded. You could feel bad for those people. <laughs> you really gonna be a check your privilege Tom Cruise or Tom Hanks whatever check your privilege on that island won't you check your you <laughs> let me tell you something let me tell you something when Tom Hanks is trying to escape off that goddamn island his love for Wilson that fucking volleyball when Wilson got detached from that little raft that motherfucker almost killed himself trying to save fucking Wilson bro it's the illest shit I've ever seen in my life. The only thing I hate about Castaway, they didn't show him jacking off. What? They didn't never show him jacking off. You know, he, he was on the island for years. He jacked off. Yeah. I mean, what do you think he was eating for the first three months? <laughs> <laughs> that protein, baby. Son, come on. <laughs> That's why his hair grew so fucking fast. That's why that beard grew so fucking fast. <laughs> That's what the fuck happened. Listen. Disrespectful. Um, I know you were acting a little wild with that, but you'll take it back once you see this. Disrespectful. Joe Exotic. Once you see Nick Cage all, play Joe Exotic. That, that's whack. And I'm going to tell you why that's whack. Why? We just had this great fucking docu-series, reality show, whatever. Why do we need that in a scripted version? 
Some we don't. Why? I, we don't. We don't have to remake like, everything, bro. We don't have to like, remake everything. Like, we saw it. Like, what could be better than that? I like, know. seriously. We saw the real life. That's like, imagine somebody came right now and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a scripted movie about Michael Jordan's last year in the NBA. Do you really think it could be remotely as good as the shit we just seen? Yeah, but who's going to play Jordan, though? I have no idea. It's a great idea. I mean, you could go out on a... I mean, if you're going... I don't know. I really, I really don't know. I have no idea. All right, let's do some Ask a Fucking Idiots, man, and get the fuck out of here. Let's do it! Did you... Okay, I got him right here. All right. Um, you have Ask them? an Idiot. Yeah, I got him. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Mazara wants to know, does God prioritize the earth first or the humans that live on it? Wow. Does Great God prioritize question. the earth first or the humans, the humans that live, that on, live it? on it? I mean, like, so far he's been prioritizing the humans that live on it, right? Haven't we been fucking the earth up? I don't think he's prioritizing it. You think, think he's, he's prioritizing shit go? I think God prioritizes life, period. And it's up to us what we prioritize. Prioritize, right? Okay. Because you can you can live as you can be a human living on this earth and forget to prioritize God. Right. So when you forget to prioritize God, you start taking matters in your own hands. Right. And you start, you start uh, you know, being more of the human flesh than of the spirit. And when you start being more of the human flesh, then your desires change and um the things you ha you give value to change. And right. That's when you start tearing down fucking trees to put Starbucks up. And, right, right, right. You know, shit, shit like that. So I think that God prioritizes life. And when we stop prioritizing God, then he may not necessarily prioritize us. Got you. That makes sense. Like God doesn't distinguish between the life on earth and the life as a human being. All of it is nah. just life. I think that's how we should approach it. I think if yeah. we approach things like, we're all God's creatures. I think we would move a little bit different. Not even just with each other as humans, but just in our interactions with like, you know, fucking. The environment. Anim animals. animals, the environment, yeah. like tree, everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like um, Quentin JG87, Ask an Idiot. He says, he says, Coach, what's your favorite comedy special? Elephant in the, well, in history, it's probably Delirious by Eddie Murphy. In recent history, Elephant in the Room by Patrice O'Neill. Mm. That was my favorite one. I saw it live and I saw it on TV. It holds up. It's got everything. I mean, he's going in the crowd. He's doing bits. He's just, in my opinion, he's the greatest of all time. And uh, you get to see him at his peak. And he's just a force to be reckoned with. Like, so effortlessly funny and just brilliant. And, like, you got to, that's Patrice right there. Where's the image? How long? How how? That's how why we got a I'm, picture of him right here in the studio. Can you see? Who who do you see Patrice in nowadays? Um, man, it's tough. I mean, he's always been someone that I've emulated, like this guy who's like speaking honestly and like speaking. You know, there's like schools of thought. I think that you like come up under a lot of comics in New York come up under like the David Tell school of thought. You know, he's an iconic comic, uh, one of the best I've ever seen. And a lot of comics came up under him. And I think there was a lot of comics that came up under uh, Rock and then Chappelle. And I think I was a Rock guy until I found Patrice. And I realized, oh, shit, no, that's actually the guy who's most similar to me and like the way I think about the world. Or I'm most similar to him, the way I think about the world, the way I think about jokes, the conversational nature. And it's, uh, so it's like I've always wanted to be under that school of thought, you know. And then continue that school of thought. And hopefully there are people who come up under me and they're like, oh, I fucks with that. You know, if you fuck with that, you really, if you fuck with what I do, you fuck with what Patrice does. You just don't know Patrice, maybe. Yeah, does that yeah, make sense? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I just think that he's so fucking talented and brilliant. He is a brilliant idiot in so many ways, man. Like, he would. He, all, he, he always made sense. Ugh, yeah. It was always some logic. It didn't seem like he was ever wasting jokes for, for the sake of uh, telling jokes. He remind, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say he reminds me of, but I like people like that. I like people like him. Yeah. You know, D.L. Hughley. Yeah. You know, Chappelle, Chris Rock, like they just always feel like they're trying to make you think. Yeah. You I think you guys would get along. Did you ever meet him? I don't think I ever met Patrice, but I do remember um, when I was first starting with Wendy back in like 06, 
06, 07. And, it, and when I think about it, like a lot of us were doing like these talking head stuff. So we was doing these talking head segments for uh, VH1. VH1 used to do like those, I love the 80s, I love the 90s shows or some shit like that. Yeah. And, and I remember Tiffany Haddish. That's when I first ran into Tiffany. You know, she was at one of those, um, she was shooting one of them the same day I was. But I remember Patrice telling one of the producers at VH1, like, I don't get this Charlemagne the God shit. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this Charlemagne the God shit? I heard that. And I was like, what do you mean? He doesn't get it. And he was like, he just, I, he, he said, I don't know. He's, I don't know. He Yo, just, I think that you guys would have got along. I think you guys would have had a lot of mutual respect um, because what Patrice is to me, the best way I could describe it probably right now is like, he is six foot something, 300 pound black Larry David. Oh, that'd have been great. You know what I'm saying? And that like, yeah. he's unapologetically black. He is in whatever his environment he is in. He is being himself. It doesn't matter. If it makes you uncomfortable. It doesn't matter if it makes someone else uncomfortable. He has to speak how he feels. And if he catches you being fraudulent, he catches, he catches you being fake. He is not afraid to call you out on that shit. Even if it yeah. makes the dinner fucking ruined, just like Larry cannot, he cannot not be himself. And yeah, I just yeah, love I people that are so fucking honest with themselves, man. Yeah, he, I get. I remember. I remember hearing Chris Rock say one time that somebody asked him if if what would, what would we be doing if Patrice was alive, and Chris was like, if Patrice was alive, we'd all be working for him. That was a while ago. He said that too. That was years ago. He said we'd all be working for him. I, I honestly, I wish that that'd be true, but I don't think that he would ever be a guy who could be that big because he got in his own way about that. And I think sometimes you got to play the game in order to get to that level. And he was a guy who just wasn't going to play the game at all. I think he yeah. was maybe burned by the game or something, but like, I think what was so great about him, what we love so much about him is he, he was so raw and so honest and a guy who's that raw and that honest and operating in, in, in an industry that's really fucking fraudulent. Usually those things don't mix. Absolutely. You know, but yeah, man, go uh, check out Patrice, man. Um, to jail. Naik wants to know if I had a roast, who would he want? Who would I want to be roasting him? Ooh, uh, we got to do the Charlemagne roast. I mean, I got I mean, all my friends are comics. That's what uh, I'm saying. It'd be good. That shit would be fire. You know what I mean? Like, I would have Andrew, of course. Um, Duval. Uh, D.L. Hughley. Um, Amanda Seals. Uh, Pete. I'd have Pete Davidson. I think Jesse May would be good at that, too. Yeah. Jesse May. I don't know. I got so many comedian friends. I, I I would definitely run through my Rolodex of everybody. Only name I would skip is Donnell Rollins. What? Donnell's the, Donnell's the, he, uh, Donnell's the only person I wouldn't fucking call on purpose. Why? Because <laughs> I know it would hurt his fucking feelings. I know it would I know it would hurt him off. And I would let him know that, hey, I, I would put it out. I'm having a roast. <laughs> Charlemagne the God. It's going to be a roast to Charlemagne the God. I would put in big bowl letters. I'm going to have some of my favorite comedians, some of the funniest people on the planet. You know all of my friends are some of the funniest motherfuckers on the planet. You know I, I only roll with the best, baby. I only roll with the cream of the crop of comedians. I'm only going to have the best on my roast. You know I got access to a lot of comedians, right? And you know a lot of comedians are my friends. So look at the list. I would literally have 40 different comedians on my shit <laughs> and none of them would be Donnell just to piss him the fuck off. Just to have him text my phone and be like, see what I'm saying, son? See this the fuck I shit I'm gonna be talking about. And I would just put, send him back an eggplant emoji and a smiley face. <laughs> I saw, listen, everybody was text, everybody was tweeting me about Donnell on Joe Rogan. Yo, I saw him. What is happened with that? He's a, Donnell is a sensitive motherfucker. Okay. That's it. Explain he's to just me. A, he's just a sensitive ass dude. And I know he's sensitive. So I fuck with him. And, and that's what he told Joe. when Joe was like, <laughs> the funniest shit about that shit was Joe Rogan was like, because Joe thought we was, Joe thought he was joking. Yeah, yeah. And then when Joe realized he really felt the way, Joe was like, well, have you talked to him about this? And he was like, <laughs> and Donnell was like, yes. And the motherfucker go tell me you a sensitive motherfucker. That's why I won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> He's a what? He's a what? I told him, I told him you're a sensitive motherfucker. And that's why I'm never going to stop fucking with you. You're sensitive. He you is, can't huh? be a sen I don't like sensitive comedians. Now, this, can you break down like where the sensitivity began? I think I know. 
I think I know the prank that you you played on him where this might have started. I've, I've played a million of them. He, he talked about one on Joe Rogan. It was like the, the first time I told everybody in the room, I said, no matter what Donnell says, do not laugh. Don't laugh. But he's a comedian. He's selling Carolines. He comes in there, first 10 minutes, he going, he hard. We just all sitting there looking at him, not saying a goddamn thing. <laughs> to the point where Donnell goes, I'm going to post that on social media this week. I'm going to post that on Throwback Thursday. And to the point where Donnell goes, this is a cold room. This room is... <laughs> this room is really <laughs> hey, and it's like, yo, by the way, every time Donnell comes to the Breakfast Club, people love Donnell's interviews. They love our interaction with each other. They love us fucking with him. Yes. Just like they like when he fucks with me on social media. Yes. I'm not stopping. And neither is he. Right. Okay? The difference between me and Donnell is I don't give a fuck. Right. I repost. Oh, I'm going to tell you another thing I love to do to Donnell. What's that? What's that? I'm going to tell you what I love to do. <laughs> Donnell go out of his way. I don't know who. I think he, I forgot the brother's name. He got a guy that uh, helps him make the memes and shit. So they'll have these great memes where they'll take like my face and put them on like people's bodies and not pictures. Like the, the person. Video, yeah, the video. Yeah, the video. I saw that. Yeah. And he'll, he'll put his tag at Donnell Rollins. I'll send it to my 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 digital guy. I'll send it to Nick. I'll send it to Sim. I'm like, blur Donnell's name and send me this I'm going to repost this. <laughs> and I repost it. I repost it. Ooh. I repost it. And I take, I'll be like, I'll be like, I'll repost it with like a, a, a nice little caption, like the workout video. He posted two workout videos, right? And the workout videos is this gay guy with my face and he's dancing. So I'll repo I reposted both of them and put, yo, I'm just trying to stay tight during this quarantine, whatever, whatever. Rips. Rips. 700,000 likes, a million likes, 2,000, 3,000 comments. No at Donnell Rollins <laughs> in the goddamn video at all. He was upset about that too. I know. And I love it. 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 Yo, Charlemagne, you really got the Black Panther outfit on where like, you know, if you punch him, it makes him stronger. <laughs> you taking a Black Panther approach to Donnell? Uh, he, I listen, you. I love it. What did he say, Taylor? What did Donnell say? He was like, yeah, because I was talking about like getting one of the um, Bullion Beast. And he was like, and they were talking about Charlamagne. He's like, yeah, you know, Charlamagne thinks he's funny. Um, <laughs> <not> <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, thinks he's funny now posting my name, whatever, like that. Like, okay, I, I'm gonna get him back. I'm gonna get him back. <laughs> Bro, listen, if Donnell, if Donnell ever sends his screenshots out, when I terrorize him via text, I'll text Donnell shit like, I'll never give you credit. <laughs> Like just little stupid shit. It drives him fucking crazy. Dog, I love that it. no laughing shit made me fucking crack up, dude. There was there was once a time where like Akash. So we got this comic buddy named Mike Blaustein, right? And like getting mm -hmm. past at a comedy club in New York is a really big deal. And it's hard to, right? Like, and if you get an opportunity to audition to get past where you get to work there regularly, like mm -hmm. it's a huge deal. So Akash called up this comedy club owner from Stand Up New York and said, yo, can you do me a favor and give my boy Mike an audition and we're actually going to prank him. So Akash is hosting the show and he told the whole audience not to laugh when Mike goes oh, up for the I audience. love it. Oh, sorry, man. Sorry, Akash, sorry, you sick bastard. Sorry, I love it. So it's the whole audience. Now, Mike thinks oh. it's a real audition. So he goes there. He's texting us during the day. He's like, should I wear this type of thing? What do you think I should do? Like, should I wear a hat? Or is that, you know, unbecoming of me if I'm wearing a hat? We're like, yeah, I go with the hat. They love the hat, blah, blah, blah. Now, Mike is the type of comic where he's really big into act outs. You know how some comics, they just stand there, do the one-liners? Yeah, yeah, Mike yeah. Mike is the yeah, opposite. Yeah. He's up, he's yeah. jumping, he's dancing. You know what I mean? He's doing, he's doing, he's doing characters, he's doing voices, he's, oh. hot, he's sweating. Bro, like, oh, he's I sweating. Love it. So he goes up there, he does his audition. The audience isn't, we're talking about packed, sold out crowd. The audience isn't moving. He's doing characters, he's doing act outs, he's squatting down on his knees, he's doing everything he possibly can, right? He lands this one, he lands his one punchline, the punchline that's gonna save him no matter what, the thing that always gets a laugh on the audition for the first club he could pass at, right? He lands the line, nothing, and he just goes, he just goes, 
Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I wish I, I could see that whole shit in my head. I wish I had saw that. I promise you, if you see me at a comedy show and I'm dying laughing, it's because either somebody is extremely funny or they're bombing. <laughs> And when you're really funny, I'm really not laughing that much because I'm so in tune to what you're saying. I don't want to miss shit. Yeah. Right? I've watched plenty of comedy shows and just been sitting there chuckling. And then at the end, I'm like, yo, that was brilliant. Yeah. Right? Because that's what I'm looking for. But if you're bombing, I'm I'm dying. <laughs> Ta Taylor knows. Taylor been with me at a comedy show. I'm, cr I'm crying. It was a white girl. She was horrible. Whee! <laughs> wait, wait, what? You, his laugh was making other people laugh because it was so bad. Wait, wait, what happened? What happened? What happened? The only other person that understands this like I do is Wax and Duval. Wait, what happened? Bruh, she was doing impressions, man. And them shit just wasn't landing. And so when she would do the impression... The audience, this is a white girl, and it said Caroline's opening up for a black person. So she's doing these impressions, and some of them are about black people. And so when she says them, they're not landing, and the crowd is going silent, and I'm sitting there trying to hold it. And you can't. But the longer they quiet, <laughs> and what I loved about her, what I loved about her shows, she didn't give up. So she just kept letting them impressions fly. And it seemed to the crowd like I was the only one enjoying them. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. <laughs> I was like, I just like seeing the bomb, man. It's just something about it. That It's just something about watching somebody bomb that is so fucking funny to me, bro. And especially when they fight through it. When they act Don't, like the audience isn't... When they, when they act, fight through it, when they just keep going, just keep they punching, keep swinging. man. You like to see someone swing, huh? I like seeing them swing. Don't give up. Don't be like Hannibal Burst. Seen Hannibal. What happened? <laughs> I seen Hannibal. I seen the crowd getting the best of him one night. One night, one night, a stage got the best of Hannibal, and uh, Hannibal goes, "This ain't working for y'all, is it?" <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 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 Oh. But yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna tell you another time. I pissed Donnell off. Donnell posted a picture. Yeah. During the quarantine, yeah, of him brushing his hair, yeah, because you know he really got the George Jefferson shit right, yeah. like bald aside. I took his picture. I texted him, and I said, "Yo, um, you put my face on this, and I'll you know tag you, whatever, whatever." <laughs> he sent it right back. I posted it and didn't tag him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so he's in my, he's in my comments talking about that's my head, son. <laughs> Do you know how stupid that sounded? <laughs> you randomly in my mentions talking about that's my head and nobody saw it. Like nobody gave a fuck. Oh, I love it so much, man. Shout out to Donnell Rollins. Yo, we need I'm to get guy. him on. Maybe we should get him on and have like a little, uh, you know, see if we can uh, make a peace treaty between you guys. We should have him on and then we mute him out the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we should have him on and make sure it's like a super long podcast <laughs> for like two and a half hours. Bro. And, and then just mute him the whole podcast. Bro. You'd be so mad. Mm. <laughs> I think that's it. Salute to my guy, Donnell Ross. <laughs> Fucking crazy ass, sensitive ass comedian. Uh, uh, anything else, Schultz? Nah, that's great, man. Let's do it. Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.